Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been quite a day. <laughs> we had a very exciting day today. We got to meet with and speak with Mr. Larry Brock, and that was super awesome. Um, Cypher checked some of the footage when we got home. It looks good, so it's going to take him a few few days to edit i would expect because this is the first time we've ever used a two camera setup so i think it might be a little bit trickier than uh, he's used to but it'll just be longer just because there's more footage to go through but uh i'm i'm gonna have a good time doing it i think and um uh yeah just want to let everybody know mr brock is as he's even more down to earth off camera than he is on camera and even on camera you get the sense that he's pretty down to earth so um, it was, it was, a, a, an actual pleasure to, to just talk to him. So, um, if you ever have the chance to meet Mr. Brock, he's very approachable. Um, you know, don't let the stare worry you, <laughs> so, but, um, it was, it was great. We can't wait to uh, release the episode. So hopefully early next week, we're going to aim for maybe Easter Monday. We'll see how it goes though. So anyhow, why are we here? Well, it's funny why we're here. So, um, in preparing for the the, t the chat that we were going to have with uh, Mr. Brock, I was watching a um, a committee that actually occurred last Tuesday, and this was a um, it, it was a committee meeting on the SNC Lavalin affair in investigating why the RCMP didn't you know continue investigating, and. About halfway through it, I was just, I was so, um, let's just say, taken aback by everything going on in committee. I just, I realized we, we have to live stream this. We absolutely have to do it. There is so much that goes on here. We just have to do it. I was up till, I think, 20, 20 to 3 in the morning um, just screening this so I can make Cole's notes for Fox in the morning so she could be ready to go into the uh the chat with mr brock so here we are this is going to be a crazy live stream fox has not seen this no i haven't but i think it's going to provide really good context for uh when you guys get to see the interview we did with mr brock yeah i think so too so um so everybody who tunes in tonight you are uh you're doing a really really good thing and uh helping yourselves uh as we get into the uh, the chat with mr brock because we spent about uh, I'd say 90% of our, our discussion with Larry Brock talking about SNC Lavalin. Um, so this will um, this will provide a lot of context to that as uh, as we saw as we saw. Um, uh, so Fox, you want to go over the rules, and we'll get into the housekeeping after that. Yeah, same rules as always. Um... Number one, please respect each other and the platform. Number two, no selling, soliciting, or spamming the chat. And number three, please don't use profanity. Um, we're actually being told uh, more often these days that folks are using our channel to teach their children about politics, which is awesome because, um, you know, if you if you start them young, you get them used to, okay, this is how things work. Uh, hopefully they won't uh, get indoctrinated when they go to school. Uh, <laughs> this go. is also a weeknight live stream, so unfortunately we won't be able to address chats, general chats or general questions in the chat. Um, but Barnaby is here. Um, he said he's opening the bar at 1,000 likes, so please get those likes up and then you can get your drink orders in. <laughs> And uh, Jester is off tonight because he's actually attending Pierre's rally in Winnipeg, which is really awesome. So there you go. Uh, so let's get into the housekeeping. Gokodani with five gifted Northern Perspective memberships right off the top. Thank you very much for that, Gokodani. Mr. Excuses with a uh, member comment. I saw rain tax talks in Toronto. I'm wondering what's next. Air tax based on my weight, flatulence, passing tax. <laughs> yeah. Weren't they gonna? Weren't they gonna tax us based on like cow farts or something, and that would make the price of beef go up? Something like, like that. Like these liberals come up with the most asinine things. Yeah, don't let's not give them any idea, Mister Excuses. <laughs> um, Mike Trombley with a two seventy nine super chat. Hit that like button on the way in. Absolutely, Mark uh, Perusa with a two dollars super chat. All I can say is WTF. If you want, if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, we definitely know, and you'll get one of those later. <laughs> and um, Justin Trudeau joins us in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. With a two dollar super chat, I am not a crook. I don't believe you, Mr. Trudeau. <laughs> uh, do you know Richard Nixon? <laughs> anyway, just saying. <laughs> Arru! <laughs> Arru! 
If you watch Futurama, you know what that is. Anyway, let's uh, get right into this. Committee is about two and a half hours, so let's let's get through this, uh, and you can get to the crazy stuff. So, without further ado, off we go. Uh, bienvenue à la réunion numéro. Welcome to meeting number 108 of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Access to Information, Privacy and Ethics. Pursuant to Standing Order 1083H and the motion adopted by the committee on Monday, October 30th, 2023, the committee is resuming its study of the decision of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to not pursue a criminal investigation in relation to the SNC-Lavalin affair. ...is taking place in a hybrid format, format pursuant to the standing orders. Members are attending in person in the room and remotely using the Zoom application. And again, a reminder to all that are participating to make sure that you keep the earpieces away from the microphones because they could cause a potential injury to our interpreters. I'd now like to welcome our witness for today, uh, Mr. Michael Warnick, former clerk of the Privy Council. Currently, Jara Lasky Chair in Public Sector Management at the University of Ottawa. Before uh, we begin, um, I am going to ask uh, again for unanimous consent to reset the clock at the top of the hour uh, to, uh, to uh, give uh, the opportunity to our Bloc and NDP members uh, a chance for six-minute questioning. Do I have unanimous consent on that? Sure. Thank you. Now, I understand, Mr. Warnick, first of all, I want to welcome you to committee. I understand that you do not have an opening statement today, so I'm going to go to questions, and we are going to start with Mr. Barrett for six minutes. Mr. Barrett, go ahead. Okay, so before we get into this, um, for those of you who may not know who Michael Wernick is, um, you may say, just like, who is this guy? And what does he have to do with it? He's at the University of Ottawa. Well, at one point, as John Broussard said, he was the clerk of the Privy Council. And the clerk of the Privy Council is the guy who has the stamp to actually make things cabinet Conf uh, or, confidential or move them into cab cabinet confidence yeah yeah so um he was also he was also secretly recorded by jody wilson raybold when he was uh helping justin trudeau try to intimidate her and try to interfere in this whole snc lavalin prosecution to uh, uh to try and get her to drop the investigation and pursue a deferred prosecution agreement so he was he was caught red-handed on tape by jody wilson raybould and um it's it's pretty pretty concrete what he says and uh, and you're going to hear what not the recording but you're going to hear uh, some of the transcript of what he says during committee so um he is a very very central witness as it relates to Justin Trudeau interfering within the SNC Lavalin um, uh, prosecution and the whole core of, of the investigation into an obstruction of justice charge uh, for tr for Justin Trudeau. So I hopefully hopefully that provides you some context and um, get ready to get irritated. So. Um, I already have elastics on my glasses. Any of you who have glasses, now this is your warning because he, he's going to irritate the, the bejesus out of you. Oh, I guess I should take mine off then, eh? Mm. Uh, Dandeman966 with a $5 super chat. Really crazy that uh, Mount Royal Quebec could go blue if House Father resigns. Uh, could go blue for the first time since World War II. Yeah, there's a that lot of something. places like that. Uh, Nilik, a member for four months. Ding dong. Hit that like button, folks. Had a great time at the rally last night. Pierre is awesome, even when exhausted. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, 3,000 people where you were, Nilik. Jeez Louise. Uh, that must have been something to see. And, uh, okay, let's get into it. Sir, has the RCMP contacted you regarding Justin Trudeau's role in the SNC-Lavalin scandal? His response was not audible. Yeah. Mr. Wernick, uh, sorry, you're going to have to hit uh, unmute. There you oh, go. Oh, sorry. The usual Zoom mute, unmute. Uh, sorry, I did hear the question, sir. Um, no, they have not. 
But you were interviewed um, for the Ethics Commissioner's uh, report, the Trudeau II report on the SNC-Lavalin scandal. Is that correct? Yes, I retired in April of 2019, Easter weekend. I was interviewed one time by the Commissioner in the preparation of the report. I was interviewed by the RCMP that summer um, about the lobbying activities of principals of SNC-Lavalin. And um, did you have any further contact with the RCMP following, uh, with respect to SNC-Lavalin, uh, following that interview in 2019? Never prior and never after. Did the RCMP ask you about, uh, did they ask you any questions dealing with uh, Justin Trudeau? That was five years ago. I do not remember the, the flow of the interview. We basically went over the material, which uh, you will see in the commissioner's report. You, you don't remember um, if the prime minister's name was said by the RCMP. I can tell you, I, I've, I've um, uh, as part of uh, complaints that I filed uh, with the RCMP, um, have been interviewed by them, and, I, and it was years ago. I remember uh, very distinctly um, how that interview went, and I certainly would remember uh, if uh, the Prime Minister's name was mentioned. It was, I can tell you in, in, in my case. Uh, was the, the Prime Minister's name mentioned, was a question asked of you about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau when you were questioned what by the, the RCMP? Interview was, the interview took the form of going through the chronology of events, who met with whom, who spoke with whom, communicated with whom, and so on, and so yes, the role the Prime Minister came up because I was uh, in contact with the Prime Minister during that period I was clerk. The um, question of obstruction of justice, which is a criminal offence, was raised with respect to the Prime Minister's involvement in the SNC-Lavalin scandal. Uh, this is, a, of course, a, a, um, events in which you were involved. Um, most Canadians would have expected that you would have been interviewed on that subject. Do you think you should have been interviewed uh, in the RCMP's um, pursuits uh, with respect to obstruction of justice concerns uh, or allegations about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? I have no view on that, Mr. Cooper. It's up to the police who they decide to interview. Uh, thank you very much. My esteemed colleague, Mr. Cooper, will have questions for you later. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm Michael Barrett, and uh, I did have the opportunity to ask you questions when you appeared at the Justice Committee about uh, the SNC-Lavalin scandal, and I'm glad that we have you here today as well. <laughs> Put it this way, I would not want either of those Michaels asking me tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cooper will be with you shortly. Yeah, <laughs> they're both great guys, but I would not want to be on their bad side. And you know what he's going to ask you? Uh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I really hope he does. <laughs> That's what he's going to ask. <laughs> oh man. Um, so this is what you're. Th this is what you're going to get from from Michael Wernick in in most of this committee. Um, I will say he is a frustratingly uh, he's frustratingly good at avoiding questions. So um, I'm not sure if this has come from a lot of prep or his, of his experience over time with government, but he's he's very good at dodging questions. Um, in, infuriatingly good. And it, well, it, it, it'll lead to some interesting interactions down the road. Um, but uh, anyway, this is how it's kicking off. So let's see where it goes. We have Jarsha with a $2 super chat. Here we go, popcorn's popping. Oh, I'm so jealous, Jarsha. Uh, just me, Nicole, with a five dollars super chat. If you can try and catch Dan Lloyd short on uh, Child Abuse new bill, RCMP not happy. Interesting. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Excuse with a two dollars super chat. Liberals at Ogo last two days was disgraceful. We heard we are actually going to be dropping a video tomorrow about Ogo today, where all the premiers were um, discussing the carbon tax. Uh, P.S. Sharky with a $10 super chat. At Barnaby from Northern Perspective, if you're giving out rage helmets, I'll take two. I keep breaking mine. <laughs> and that's your first super on a live stream. Thank you very much. Uh, the Colonel, welcome, sir, with a $5 super chat. Congrats you two on getting the gods of the mighty Ogo for an interview. Much love from the CFB Petawawa, only one and a half hours away from Ottawa. PP, 4 p.m. Honk, honk. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Uh, the Colonel. And Andaman966 with a uh, member comment. This channel is is awesome learned a lot from you guys let's celebrate three months 
Well, happy three months, Thank Dan. You. It's and, nice to have you. And I have an update from Jester, who's at the Winnipeg rally. He says, oh, my Lanta, Senator Platt is here. <laughs> oh, Senator Platt. That's Very amazing. Very cool. So Senator Platt is the, uh, he's essentially the conservative lead in, in the Senate. And he's, uh, he's, he's the guy doing yeoman's work trying to block all of this uh, freedom robbing legislation like Bill C-11, Bill C-18 and whenever C-63 gets there and whenever the election reform bill gets there. Um, he's... He was the one that stood up against those liberal senators who blocked the carbon tax bill in relation to the farmers. Yes. Uh, I think it was Bill uh, 234 if I'm C2, not mistaken. C-234 yeah. and he's the one that the liberals keep referring to who's a bully in the Senate. Yeah because he got so pissed off at their dirty underhanded tactics that he kind of like ripped off his earpiece and threw it on the desk. Yeah and went over and talked to them. So, so. scary. Yeah, you want to see a bully? Look at uh, um, look at the guy in Ottawa. Yeah. You know, the head guy, Trudeau. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Colonel with a $2 super chat. One like equals one vote for Pierre. I'll go with that. And women hauling oversized with a $7 super chat. So you know, I've got the same trailer and there's room for this fella. <laughs> I love the chains. Oh, that's amazing. amazing. Well played there. Okay, let's go. Um. Do you have any view on who the RCMP uh, should have interviewed? We have a list of who the RCMP, or excuse me, who the ethics commissioner interviewed. We know who the RCMP interviewed, but those lists aren't uh, aren't the same. Um, Justin Trudeau, Katie Telford, uh, Jerry Butts. Uh, do you think they should have been interviewed to uh, to exonerate the prime minister? I have no view on who the police should choose to interview. They, uh, can, not every issue of ethics or behavior rises to the level of a preliminary investigation or fact-finding or examination. Not all of those move on to a full investigation in, in the terms that journalists and politicians use them. These are decisions to be made by the police and by the prosecutorial service. We know that the uh, Prime Minister uh, broke the law. Um, that's a matter of uh, public record. Uh, him having broken the uh, Conflict of Interest Act. There was a finding uh, of that by the Ethics Commissioner. And, um, and we know that there's a, a big gap in the RCMP's work, and it's just it's very curious about how that came to pass. Um, if the RCMP um, were to pursue an investigation uh, into the SNC-Lavalin scandal and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, would you fully cooperate? Of course. A, uh, Another uh, law enforcement agency, the Ontario Provincial Police, for example, were to undertake an investigation into the uh, SNC-Lavalin scandal. Would you fully cooperate? Of course. Do you possess any documents related to the SNC-Lavalin scandal or the deferred prosecution agreement? No, I left government in April 2019, five years ago. Keep that in mind. 2019, five years ago. Keep, keep that in mind. Okay. So he was asked, do you have any documents related to the SNC-Lavalin scandal or the deferred prosecution agreement? He said, no, I left government five years ago. Keep that in mind. Didn't we have an election in 2019? And 2021. All right, um, just making sure. And so you'll need, the, you'll need that information in about an hour and a half. Okay. And the question wasn't when you left government the second time that you've offered us that date. The question was about mm -hmm. you having the documents... I have no documents. Um, why did Justin Trudeau go to such great lengths to pursue a, uh, a deferred prosecution agreement for his friends at SNC-Lavalin? I have nothing to add to my testimony at the Justice Committee five years ago. You have nothing to add. So, um, so you, you, there, was no, there was no rationale. So uh, if I were to say that it was um, to help out a liberal, friendly firm, uh, you have nothing to add to that? I gave my testimony at two meetings of the Justice Committee two parliaments ago, and that's my uh, account of events. So this is, um, that's not an acceptable answer at committee. You can't just come in and say, well, I've already answered this question five years ago. Answer it again. Say the same thing you did five years ago if you want, but you have to answer the question. Right. That's that's a non-answer in, in committee. Uh, and... Again, this is where the glasses were flying off last night. Dan Demand 966 with a five dollar super chat. Michael Barrett and Michael Cooper are gonna go Terminator mode. Barrett just reminding him that I'll be back. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and Angela Cardoso uh, with a member comment from one month. I love Fox and I love 
Cypher and I love Barnaby. Well, Aww, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. We love all of our viewers and our members. Um, and Short Sack with a $5 super chat. Left government in 2019. Resigned in shame. Can't argue against that. Um, well, the, the history is quite clear that uh, there was not a case made. And we've, of course, heard the um, now famous recording of you and the then uh, Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould um, when you uh, claimed uh, without uh, any evidence um, and without any any substantiation, it's yet to be provided, that it was about jobs. And we know that it was never about jobs. It was, in fact, about uh, politics. Um, Thank you. Thank did, you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, that concludes your six-minute round. Uh, Ms. Damoff, six minutes, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Wernick, thank you for, for being here today on uh, something that I, I really question, given that you left government five years ago, what you can add to a police investigation, quite frankly. Um, I wonder if you could, I served as Parliamentary Secretary at Public Safety for an, a few years. I also served on the Public Safety Committee for eight years. And, and I know one of the things that always struck me was the importance of the separation of the political arm from police investigations. Um, you know, we look at countries around the world where politicians dictate what police do, and we don't want to emulate those countries. And yet, we constantly are hearing from the opposition, but also in social media, and, and that, that somehow we as politicians should be telling police what they should and should not investigate, who they should talk to. Would you feel comfortable talking just in general terms about the importance of that separation that police investigations are independent of the political arm of a government? Isn't this rich? <laughs> like, she's like, we sh you know, politi uh, politicians shouldn't be telling law enforcement who they should and should not investigate. That's well, literally what this is about. <laughs> well, no, but if you have information, you have an obligation to provide that to the police. And then the police are going to determine, you know, whether or not it warrants an investigation. I mean, if you say, hey, I saw somebody being murdered. Here's who I saw doing the murdering. They're going to investigate that. Like, the, what a stupid comment. Yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less from Ms. Damoff, who doesn't seem to understand whether she's voting yes or no for the non-confidence motion. Right. Like, she's the one who accidentally voted yes. non-confidence. Yeah. For the she voted with the conservatives and against J Justin Trudeau on the live vote. And then, I guess, had it reversed shortly after. So, in the official record... It's recorded as a nay. Probably was horrified when she found out. Oops, that's like not how good. do you make that mistake? Yeah. Um, so and 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 again, like you're literally saying, oh, please, please describe the importance of uh, you know the political arm not interfering within the justice arm, which is exactly what Justin Trudeau did, and Gerald Butts, and Katie Telford, and Michael Wernick, and a slew of other Trudeau officials, and it's all on record. Well, and she's trying to say that providing additional information to the RCMP would be interfering. I mean, it's not. If that information is true, it's not interfering. You're helping with the investigation. What Justin Trudeau did was interfering. Yeah, if you actually have evidence and you refuse to, to bring it forward, that could constitute obstruction of justice as well or interfering in a police investigation. Hartzinger with a $5 super chat. He looks like a Parkinson's face. Uh, no excuse. Just saying they lose the ability to show any emotion like a frozen face. And Joshua with a $2 super chat. Pam will vote CPC by mistake on election day. <laughs> <laughs> and she won't be able to take it back that time. Nope. <laughs> um, well, certainly. I mean, that that is my wheelhouse these days is governance and public administration. And I've written a book on, on the trade craft of politics. So um, I the premise of your question, in a free democratic society, it's very important the justice system operate independently. That includes the police, the prosecutorial service, and the courts. Parliament, you create the framework of laws within which they operate. But in terms of their actual practice of um, investigations and arrests and prosecutions, those should be conducted fully independently. And what happens if politicians 
stick their fingers in and start directing the police. You get the SNC Lavalin well, scandal. Uh, then you're in, uh, not in a full democracy. Then you're in the sort of quasi authoritarian societies that you see around the world. Um, and you can see pressure being put on politicians. Uh, this is common practice in the United States Congress. You're seeing hearings where prosecutors and police officials and law enforcement officials are being hauled before congressional committees in the United States. And I think that's a form of pressure and intimidation on, on the law enforcement system. Thank you. Um, I remember your testimony back in 2019 at Justice Committee, and at the time, um, we had been doing Bill C-71 at the Public Safety Committee, and, and as someone who's advocated quite vocally um, for gun control, I became the target and have been for a number of years of the gun lobby, which has included threats, um, you know, memes and, and all kinds of things on what I think you called the vomitorium of social media, which I, I, still, I still remember that testimony, though, thinking how how accurate it was and since that time it's only gotten worse quite sorry something comes to mind emotional damage oh my goodness just saying okay <laughs> just i saying. mean she's a politician she's a public figure there's i think to a certain degree there's there's the expectation that you're going to have critics and people saying things that are not exactly favorable about you and i think you need to learn very quickly that you need to take that on the chin yeah yeah it's um i mean it's the same here with us right yeah yeah like <laughs> it, you um, gotta learn fast you gotta you gotta toughen up and uh here's the thing pam you literally get paid <laughs> you get paid to to hear this okay you literally get paid to hear this so um, I, I, I don't I don't want to hear it and Canadians don't want to hear it. We'd have no sympathy for you. You don't like it, step down. Well and I mean threats are threats are different. That's out of line. Like if you're threatening somebody's safety, somebody's family, et cetera. That's, right, but making that's out memes of line. about somebody, like but, give me a break. Yeah, come on. Like here's the thing. Um I was saying to Fox the other day, you know, it's almost a good thing because, you know, when we're looking for thumbnails for, for our videos, um, you're going through some of these uh, interviews with the politicians almost frame by frame to get like the perfect expression on their face. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I won't be in that scenario because I don't want people <laughs> trying to take frames of my face uh, and put them on, on social media. But at the same time, I would have to accept that it's going to happen and you just need to roll with it and point and laugh at it. That's about all you can do, right? So, um, yeah, I, you're not really getting a lot of sympathy, Pam. Um, oh, the memes. Well, welcome to the internet. Angela Cordosa with a $2 super chat. Oh my gosh, this woman speaking is such a waste. Yes, but it is important for context, unfortunately. And Mr. Garner uh, with a $20 super chat. Fox, thank you. You also have another subscriber. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. I hope it's uh, your new acquaintance that you told me about. There you go. There we are. Thank you. And please hit the like button. We're about... 800 likes behind so please 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 hit that like button and milady loves cats uh gifted 10 northern perspective memberships thank you very much milady thank very you. nice to have you aboard and uh please make sure you give um milady loves cats a thank you if you received a gifted membership a bit worse actually and uh it, recently, Mr. Barrett posted a video on social media with all of our email addresses uh, inviting people to contact us about trying to um, shut down an investigation of the RCMP. And as a result, my staff actually had to open a subfolder in my inbox a and labeled it misogyny because of the, the actual horrific emails and, and messages I was getting on social media what are, do you have any thoughts on on the direction that that our country has gone um in the last few years i mean i've been called a traitor i've been called You're a traitor um, told that my the government is corrupt and is. i and i often say to people take a look at afghanistan take a look at what's going on in in the middle east right now if you actually want to see countries where there are you know, terrorists running a country is in Gaza. You've got Afghanistan where people, women and girls have no rights at all. And it really troubles me when, when 
people are making comparisons to other countries around the world, like Russia, um, it, comparing Canada to that. And, and it, you know, you were very, your, your um, comments then have been proven correct, Mr. Wernick, I, and, and I'm, I've been a, um, unfortunately a target of all of those kind of comments. Do you, do you have anything um, to, to comment to how we can try to get back to a more civilized uh, discussion on issues? Is she serious? Yeah, she is. She, she literally ran, went on a rant of poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. Do you have any comment? And, and, well, you know, we're not a, you know, if you want to look at a corrupt government, look at Afghanistan. Um, okay, yeah, Afghanistan's bad, but guess what? So are you. But no, no, I just, the comparison to Russia thing, you guys are trying to introduce a bill, Bill C-63, that could throw Cypher and I in jail for having this channel. Yep. And you're saying, oh, well, you know, we're being compared to Russia. There's this fantastic video that Trigonometry did, and, and they released this particular part as, as part of a larger video. But this particular part, Constantine Kissin said, you know, what if I told you that in this particular country last year, something like 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media? And his guest had said, you know, that's, that's quite significant and that's scary. And Constantine said, well, that was Russia. And he said, now, how, guess how many people it have been arrested in Britain for things that they have said on social media in the past year. And it was in the thousands. And that's what they're trying to turn Canada into. Yeah. And it's not right. But you know, Pam's offended that they're being compared to Russia. Like, you know, some of the things that people call uh, Fox and I, it's, it's actually kind of bizarre. People call Fox and I liberal and NDP shills. If you can believe that, um, I'd like to understand why, but, um, you know, we, we, we've also been called uh, conservative shills. So, you know, somehow we, we are so favorable to the NDP and the liberals that we're also favorable to the conservatives. I don't get it, but go ahead, call us whatever you want. It makes no difference to us because we are going to be focusing on what we're trying to do, which is get Trudeau out of office and mm -hmm. inform Canadians. Well, and that's the bigger picture. Inform Canadians about how you can be a bigger part of our democracy, how, how you can take on a bigger role and how you can get involved in your community, uh, in Parliament. Um, there's just so many different ways that I didn't even realize until we started this channel. So, um, yeah, and, and this is why it's important to watch Miss Pam Damoff here because you get to see... The mental gymnastics going on. And the weird thing is, I think she actually believes that, which is very dangerous. So. Well, and like the misogyny thing, I don't even know if I buy that because some I people on the left think that if you make a statement such as, in general, men are stronger than women, that that's misogyny. Yeah, allegedly that's misogyny. So anyway, uh, Trish Pro with a $5 super chat. Life would be so boring without Cypher and Fox commenting. <laughs> Thank you very much, Trish. <laughs> Uh, it's always great to see you in chat. And uh, Mary Kay Styles with a $14 super chat. Even when he's not in government, he still covers up for himself and others. I hope they all get what's coming to them. And I want Mr. Brock, Mr. Cooper to prosecute them all. Batman and Robin. Bam. Yes, absolutely. I would pay. I would pay money to see Mr. Brock and Mr. Cooper just go after these guys. Although I don't think Cooper was a, a, a crown attorney. I think he was... Uh, a uh, civil lawyer, was he? Could be. Yeah, yeah I forgot. He acts like a, but, a crown prosecutor. But he's awesome. <laughs> Mr. Excuses with a $5 super chat. I make over 200000 a year and crying because my office email was given out and people are reaching out to me in anger. Suck it up, buttercup. And yeah, here's the thing. Um, you know who else gives out your email? Your government website. Well, and I read an article today um, that... The Canadian MPs, once they get this pay raise April 1st, they're going to be paid the second highest of any other, like, governing body in the world. So, so think on that. Yeah. Think on that. Joe Venuto with a $10 Super Chat. Have you guys considered scrolling all Super Chats on the screen and only reading out loud 20 and up? It might expedite the length of the streams. It would, um, but, uh, you know, the thing, Joe, is that we recognize that Canadians are having such a hard time that even even a $1 or $2 super chat 
that's important um people are actually um you know wanting to contribute and give us um you know even a dollar that they they've earned in this economy where they could be spending that on food they could be spending that on rent they could be spending that on heating so um you know we want to make sure everyone understands that we truly do value every single dollar that people um you know wish to uh, wish to donate it's important it's it's really really important yes it extends the length of the streams but um you know our position is you know we want to make sure that people people get the recognition of whatever they want to contribute and um, we also never want to take that for granted no no some channels do that they'll say you know 20 and up or 50 and up um the reason why they do that is not to reduce the length of their streams it's to encourage people to give more um and you know that's that's not the way we work at northern perspective so they can choose to run their channels how they wish um but this is how we've operated and uh, and we want to continue doing that but um it's a it's a fair question and uh, uh thank you for asking it and hopefully uh hopefully you understand the answer so thank you very much joe um scott coots with a five dollar super chat uh, any government should have to show modeling data and any experts named and or they represent for fact checking and make this pol uh, a policy to proceed yeah i, I don't disagree I 100% don't disagree. Uh, and we actually addressed that in, in one of the other uh, live streams, I believe. Now, look with a $5 super chat. It was, I was called a fascist today because I defended PP. <laughs> I had to post the definition and point out all the similarities to Trudeau. The left is ignorant to logic. Yes, they, they, they a lot of them are. And they resort to personal attacks, and that's all they have. Did that hurt? $5 super chat. Uh, did you see that Northern Perspective interview with the Conservatives? How do we keep more people from following them? Call them liberal shills. <laughs> <laughs> you just broke my brain. <laughs> yeah, let's get them. Get them! <laughs> They're sitting down with Conservatives? Man, they must be liberal shills. Yeah, jeez. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh great and well as nilik said the left is immune to logic so <laughs> and uh the colonel with a five dollar super chat and you give back more than you get like the carbon tax right <laughs> <laughs> please don't compare northern perspective to the carbon tax the colonel. <laughs> although i take your point off we go thank you well i think the chair will rein us in as being off topic of today's hearing um, i would say that i've given plenty of interviews and podcasts about this topic and you can find all of my output as a professor on my linkedin feed okay thank you um then maybe we'll get back to the the rcmp um which you're right is is the the topic of of why you're here um, and I, I only have about 45 seconds left. Is, is there anything that you wanted to add in terms of the importance of the separation of the police? Or Now, notice she said, oh, yeah, I guess we better get back to the topic at hand, you know, why we're here. You're going to need to, uh, to, to, to have that, you know, that context in about two minutes. Have we covered it all? I think I've, I've said that. What I would point out to you parliamentarians is that there are issues of ethics and behavior and conduct which do not rise to the law of criminal uh, penalties. And that is why you, Parliament, created other laws and other independent bodies to deal with them. That is why you, Parliament, created the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner, the Public Service Integrity Commissioner, and the Commissioner of Law being an allocate about $25 million to those three bodies. Sometimes those bodies uh, complete a case and refer uh, an issue to the police. Most of the time they do not. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Damoff. And uh, just before we go to uh, Mr. Vilmuir, I just want to uh, clarify something. At the opening of your comments, you mentioned that you didn't know why, uh, something to the effect that you didn't know why Mr. Wernick was here. And I just want to remind committee members that on October 30th, a motion was passed by unanimous consent to have the RCMP Commissioner, Mr. Pensans, the Ethics Commissioner, former Ethics Commissioner, and Mr. Wernick to appear before committee. And that is why he is here today. And I thank you, Mr. Wernick, for coming before committee. Mr. Vilmure, vous avez la parole pour six minutes, s'il vous plaît. Gotta love John Broussard. Pam Damoff makes a flippant comment. I go, I don't even know why you're here. Uh, he's here because we actually all agreed to invite him here. <laughs> including Remember? you but okay so 
We've already learned, though, that Pam doesn't know a yay from a nay when it comes to voting. So do you think it was an accident then, too? I was going to say something really mean about Pam Damoff about an accident, but uh, it's probably not parliamentary language. Probably not. Uh, Corey Gagnon with uh, joining uh, as NP uh, supporter. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the membership. And uh, Wendy M with a 279 Super Chat. I call her Pam Dumkoff. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Hello, Mr. Warnick. You explained earlier all of the areas in which you were not a part of this, but what was your role in this affair? As I stated, I appeared before the Justice Committee five years ago. There are four hours of recordings of what I said to the Justice Committee, and I testified before the Commissioner as well. And I explained everything to the Commissioner and to the Committee. You'll forgive me, I wasn't there four years ago. So would you be able to give me a reminder? I was the Clerk of the Privy Can Council, so the Deputy Minister to the Prime Minister, up until the Easter weekend five years ago. So this is NCC Lavalin, the Prime Minister, and at that time, what was your role? Not your function, I understand, but how did you participate in that series of events? It is very well described in the Commissioner's report. Understood. The Commissioner concluded that there was non-compliance with the code the RCMP decided not to investigate because there wasn't an infraction to the criminal code, correct? That is what I understand. In your opinion, as having worked at the Privy Council and with your current position, I would like for you to confirm something. Do you believe that an event can be unethical and legal? There are many laws in Canada. There are laws on ethics, on conflicts of, inter conflicts of interest, lobbying, whistleblowers. There are behaviors that are not a matter of criminal law. So we can not be violating the code while not be violating the act. That was the conclusion made by the Commissioner. Please tell me now about Cabinet confidences, because the Commissioner stated that it depends on who's interpreting it. We asked Mr. Pinsens, who said that sometimes they have more access than others. Can you tell us a bit more, please? I'm not sure I understood your question. Can you describe the parameters of Cabinet confidences, because the RCMP commissioner and Mr. Pinsens stated that it was not always a yes or no answer. There were some murky situations. So where do cabinet confidences start and end? Answer. It's a, a very important question. It is important to the federal government and the provinces that discussions that occur in the cabinet room be confidential. It is, it is, it has been recognized in many Supreme Court decisions. That's a basic principle. The role of the clerk of the Privy Council exists, has existed for 800 years. And they would be responsible for discussions. The secretary and the clerk of the Privy Council, both roles that exist, have existed for a long time. And one of the roles of the clerk is to safe keep documents and protect the confidentiality of cabinet discussions. 
there are certain cases where I gave access to certain discussions to the courts or to commissioners. That is one of the role, roles of the clerk. During your time as clerk, were cabinet confidences assessed on a case-by-case -case basis? For sharing, you mean? Case-by-case. So for some topics, we could receive more information, and in other cases, we, we could decide that, no, it was too confidential. For example, in the Norman affair, I gave access to all documents to the judge because the process was governed by a judge and a tribunal. In other cases, we can share a part of the documents with redactions, with names or other elements removed. Apolog uh, apologies for interrupting you. My time is quite limited. But how come there was no disclosure in that case then? It was not my decision that happened after I left. Thank you very much. So this was a, a very important line of questioning, and I wanted to let it play out by Mr. Vumida. Um because he, he's really getting around uh, and questioning, you know, what what is the actual role of the clerk of the Privy Council? What do they have to do with cabinet confidence and all of this? Because the cabinet confidence has been cited by the RCMP as the primary reason that they cannot proceed with the investigation. Now, what he said was really important. Um, so the, the Norman affair was something, you know, related to um, an investigation that the clerk of the Privy Council was tasked with getting the potential documents for. Now, he actually went back to Stephen Harper because he had to go back to Stephen Harper's government um, to actually get the documents. And he said, I gave them everything. So isn't that interesting when he has to get all the documents from a conservative government, he gets everything and discloses everything but not as it relates to Justin Trudeau. Now, what he did say, and he's accurate, is he wasn't the clerk at the time of the investigation was going on for the RCMP for SNC-Lavalin. He was, you know, recused from that. So, um, like, there's all of these different pieces that are crisscrossing, and they start to reveal a lot of inconsistencies as it relates to what is going on or what isn't going on in this investigation as it relates to SNC-Lavalin. Anyhow, let's uh, let's get into the housekeeping. Daniel with a 279 Super Chat. As Spock would say, fascinating and illogical. Yes, he certainly, certainly would. Nice, another Trekkie. Love it. Yeah. And next we have uh, the Jillian Davis with a $2 Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. Jay Hawk at Jayhawk73 with five gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much for that, Jay. Uh, Humble Tracker uh, stepping in with 20 go gifted during the perspective memberships. Thank you very much, Humble Tracker. Good to see you in chat. Uh, Pitsky P with a $10 super chat. Pierre Paul, you have dust to sleep. He waits <laughs> for the next election. <laughs> well played. Amazing. Paradoxy, good to see you with a $40 super chat. Runs in the family. His sister, Rachel Wernick, retired, who was senior official at Employment and Social Development Canada, responsible for skills training and youth programs underlying the Wheat Charity Controversy in oh, 2020. Of course. Nice. Thank you for bringing that up. And Humble Tracker with a $50 super chat. Thank you very much. Keep up the great work. Love the channel. Love the peoples that are here. Thank you very much uh, for your generous donations, Humble Tracker. Really, really appreciate it. Lisa Sershepnis, good to see you back with a $5 super chat. They need to stop messing around and let the OPP commissioner investigate uh, this because nothing is getting done, my two cents. Um, yeah, they have to present it to the OPP uh, first. We'll actually get into that uh, in our interview with Mr. Brock early next week. So stay tuned for that, Lisa Sershepnis. Um, uh, clips with uh, perspectives, I'm assuming, uh, with a $10 super chat look into the resource drilling and blasting program at Fleming College. Environmental and geotechnical drilling is the unknown, unregulated major industry that works for companies like SNC-Lavalin. Well, we know what kind of company SNC-Lavalin is. So, uh, Diane Sylvain with a $20 super chat. Hi there, Cypher and Fox. Last 
uh, book in the world I would buy is Mr. Wernix, except maybe if I need to burn in a snowstorm miles from home to save my life. We will take no lessons from Mr. Wernick on governance or, or anything, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it's it's pretty shameful that he keeps plugging his book in this. Uh, Vesper Digital with a ten dollars super chat. We need people like Pam. <laughs> uh, that way, we gain two things: entertainment value and opposition bereft of any intellect, ensuring <laughs> liberals will never host another circus they call a government. Kapla. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Wayne Newton for, uh, with a member comment. Is there any way to watch all, all the committee videos in order for all the liberal scams? Been watching your live videos, just looking uh, for more when I run out. Um, so you can you can try to go to Parlview and, and look them up, but it is tough. It is tough. Um, there's not an easy way to do it. Uh, we, we try to cover as many as we can to make it easier for people, but... Um, it's it's going to be difficult. We we may make a playlist as it relates to SNC Lavalin since we are accumulating more videos, so that may make it a little easier to fo uh, follow along on our channel. But that's about the best we can do, uh, uh, Wayne. The government surprise surprise doesn't have a great way of finding this stuff. Uh, Jelly Beans with a two dollar super chat. They give everything and redact ninety nine percent of it. And there you go. Except when it's the conservative government, Jelly Beans. Uh, David Edwards with a five dollar super chat. LOL. Uh, you effing literally interfered with the court case. This is beyond projecting. It's gaslighting at the highest level. Absolutely it is. And Hummel Tracker with a $10 super chat. Friendship is the hardest thing in the world to explain. It's not something you learn in school, but if you haven't learned the meaning of friendship, you really haven't learned anything. Good quote. David Edwards, <laughs> $2 super chat. Oh no, not the memes. Sounds like David's a little behind and he's watching Pam down off right now. <laughs> Well, welcome Amazing. to when uh, you catch up with us. Yeah, uh, Mr. Vilmure. Thank you, Mr. Vilmure. Six minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. And on the topic of uh, cabinet confidence, you had mentioned that it's a long-standing convention. Is that is that correct in how you framed it? Uh, About eight centuries worth. Yes. <laughs> and is it, how does the convention uh, compare to? The, the laws and principles of parliamentary privilege as it relates to our ability to send for documents and evidence? Um, there's a role for the clerk, which is defined in the Evidence Act, and there are often disputes between Parliament and the executive about the, the release of documents. You may recall issues around Afghan detainees years ago and so on. So there's always a case by case. It's not an absolute principle. You do not have the right to ask for my medical records or my tax returns. But to, be, so but to be clear, sir, um, as it relates to a convention, yeah. uh, as, as we were, to, as I'm to understand, and forgive mm -hmm. me for having notes to better refresh my memory or cite the actual laws, but when we were constituted, we carried with us the Westminster system from the UK mm -hmm. and the supremacy of parliamentary privilege supersedes conventions. Conventions are agreements among parliamentarians, but parliamentarian privilege is actually supreme when it comes to the conventions of our abilities and in in our standing orders as it relates to standing committees to send for documents, evidence, and witnesses. Uh, no, that's uh, your interpretation. And I know it's the interpretation of the law clerks of the house. It's not an interpretation I agree with or the courts have always agreed with. So who has primacy over the House of Commons, the courts and the clerk or the members of parliament? It's not a question of primacy of one or the other. We have a legislative branch, an executive branch, and a judiciary, and there's tension among the three all the time. And so w within that, um, in the appearance before the committee, the RCMP commissioner noted about cabinet confidences that the cabinet confidence is there for a reason. I think the interpretation of cabinet confidence, which as we discussed earlier, sometimes differs from one person to another. So you just mentioned, you think that's my interpretation, you have a different one. And the Supreme Court says that cabinet confidentiality is protected as a matter of constitutional convention, which is what you just referenced, or the rules of behavior established by the government institutions that are not enforced by the courts, but are considered binding by those who operate the constitution. So the people who operate the Constitution are the members of Parliament. And the police and the prosecutors and, and the executive part of government. And this is a principle that's binding on all branches of government. So do you think cabinet confidentiality should be further waived in the context of investigations conducted by the RCMP? Or, or should this notion of 
client solicitor privilege where the government is both the client and the solicitor um, provide them a shield from any kind of insight and, and, and or I should say oversight for criminal accountability. It's never that black or white. I think the onus should be to disclose as much as possible to formal legal processes like the police and the courts, but there may always be cases where redaction is appropriate. We're having a discussion now about the vocation of documents involving Chinese intelligence uh, activities within Canada. It would be a very bad idea to simply turn over all the documentation without redaction. Who decides what's redacted? The clerk has a role in deciding what cabinet competences are released on a case-by-case -case basis. Who else has roles? Legal advice to the clerk. Does the cabinet have a role? No, absolutely none. Does the prime minister? No. Nope. Remember that. Remember that. So the prime minister does not have a role. Okay. Um, before we get any further, uh, we are about 600 likes behind everybody. So if you would do us the generous favor of just liking the stream, what that does is, is it tells YouTube to suggest this stream to more Canadians out there and more Canadians need to know what's going on with the SNC-Lavalin scandal. Please, 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 pretty please uh, give us a like on the stream uh, and uh, allow YouTube to push this out to even more Canadians uh, and that way more people get to see what's actually going on. Wayne Noonan with a $7 super chat. Thank you. I also emailed my MP Michael Barrett saying, Spike the hike, y'all are heroes. I thought, for a minute there, I thought that you said nerds at the end. I, I, mean, I am tired today. <laughs> we are nerds, though. <laughs> we are we are nerds. <laughs> We're huge nerds, uh, if you haven't figured out yet. <laughs> Johnny O with a $7 super chat. Have you seen Garnet's uh, Dr. Seuss parody speech in, public, uh, in Parliament? Oh, my God, the funniest uh, thing ever. The MP family will love it. Cypher and Fox are awesome. Thank you very much for that. I think we've seen I think if it's the one those. I'm thinking of where he just keeps using, like, the alliteration with the letter C, it was like the conservative something, something, something. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, a couple of them have done that. Yeah. That's great. Kathy Sharp with a $10 super chat. Mr. Wernick, you don't have the rights to ask for my health records. What has our government done since 2020 and continues to ask even today? Indeed. Vesper Digital with a $5 super chat. Did Wernick actually say, you do not have the right to ask for my medical information? Didn't this government create a RiveCan, which did just that, right? Yeah, seriously. And and they made the medical decisions for you. Yes. Trevor with a $5 super chat. I just want to say that each time Freeland is on the camera, my intelligence weeps and dies a little. I just had to get this off my chest. Well, it's a good thing you're not going to be dying at all today because you won't see She's not here today. today, thankfully. Okay, let's keep those likes up. Uh, I see almost 200 since uh, since my last plead. If we can get up to 2,000, uh, maybe we'll drop some memberships if we have uh, the ability to. So there you go. Um, clips with perspective, $10 super chat to drill for your own technical reports is a major conflict of interest in the enviro and geotechnical, uh, drilling industry, Google SNC Lavalin drill rigs and, <laughs> and you break the egg on the rabbit hole. Uh Oh, and then you're going down, 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 uh, humble tracker with 10 gifted Norman perspective memberships. Thank you so much for that, uh, humble tracker and off we go. Uh, Mr. Green actually does a very serviceable job uh, uh, this evening. And, and, and no cases or situations does the cabinet or the prime minister decide what is and what isn't redacted? Um, if you go back to a previous government, then the previous prime ministers have a role in whether to release documents of their ministry. And basically you, you sequester the papers of each, ca each government when it leaves. So I went back to Prime Minister Harper a couple of times to get his consent to release documents related to the Norman affair because they had happened be uh, while he was in office. So that he, he, gave, that he gave that uh, agreement and, and we turned over the documents to the court. And so would that also carry by, by the same logic that the Prime Minister Trudeau could waive cabinet confidence at any time despite recommendations by the clerk and, uh, and by uh, legal advisors? It's a it's a discussion between the clerk and the prime minister. Ultimately, it is the, it is the clerk's job to make the final decision. Mm -hmm. Is it ever the situation that staff well below the clerk make decisions on what redactions is are? There, there would be advice from lawyers and from people like the security intelligence people as to whether redactions were appropriate or not. 
I always took the view to disclose as much as possible, but you wouldn't want to disclose business competences or intelligence services or personal names and so on. It's very similar to the process on, on access to information. And in your experience in your years, just to recap, forgive me for uh, not being as familiar as your LinkedIn profile might indicate, but how many years were you um, in, in government? 38 years, 17 so, as a deputy minister. And in that time, did you see a trend towards more cabinet confidences or less cabinet confidences? Was there, is there, you know, is this a government that was transparent by default or did they tend to have uh, more instances where they declared a greater volume of work to be in cabinet confidence? I'm not a historian, but I, uh, I think the trend line was to be more disclosure. There was a running discussion between the Auditor General of Canada and, uh, and the executive about the disclosure of documents related to the budget. I reached an agreement with the, the Auditor General, Michael Ferguson at the time, and I increased the disclosure of analysis documents related to the budget to the Auditor General. I believe that's my time. Thank that you. is, uh, Mr. Green. Thank you. That completes our uh, first round of questioning. Au commencer avec nos deuxième tour. We're going to start our second round with Mr. Bertold, who has five minutes, followed by Mr. Housefather. Okay. So, um, so Green's questions were primarily centered around the role of the clerk of the Privy Council. Now, it was very interesting because Wernick says that the Prime Minister has zero role in uh, in talking about what is redacted and what is not. And then in the very next question, he said that he went back to Harper and Harper made all the decisions. So what he seems to be talking about is that in the case of when a government departs uh, office, then it sounds like it becomes the role of the previous prime minister to decide what is and what is not. But then he kind of got a little murky because um, Green asks him specifically, okay, so like, can the, can the, can the prime minister not just say, you know, I'm waiving cabinet confidence on this. And then he says, well, kind of, he can have a discussion with the clerk. Okay. So, uh, what are you trying to say there? And and this is this is Wernick's whole intent is he gives these half statements so you don't know what he's trying to say. And it gets quite frustrating for the MPs because you know once they feel like they're getting somewhere then they run out of time, right? And it's it's these non-answers that are uh, posing a problem uh, for these questions that they're asking them. So uh, so just stay tuned. Uh, Closer perspective with the ten dollars super chat to do no that I already read that I just didn't check it off so there you go thank you very much um, here it is closer perspective for a ten dollars super chat September twenty eighth twenty seventeen SNC Lavalin transfers Canadian infrastructure projects into newly created investments fund enters into a strategic agreement with BBGI uh, SciCav SA there you go so um, isn't that Interesting, isn't that interesting? Um, and then SNC Lavalin is no longer SNC Lavalin; they are now Actus Realis. So they seem to to notice that there was a bit of a brand problem after this. <laughs> you think? <laughs> so they decided to completely change their name. And thank you to Humble Tracker for gifting ten Northern Perspective memberships. And Bubble Avenue with a seven dollar super chat afternoon debating with people on Facebook about the carbon tax cap with a surprise NP live stream. Overall, a great day. <laughs> Hashtag politics nerd. Well, awesome. welcome to the club. <laughs> We're all political nerds now. We're all nerds of some sort here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Warnick. When did you learn that SNC Lavalin was being a target of an investigation? I do not recall. And when did your interview with the RCMP happen? It was during the summer after I left, and the report came out in August, I believe. So in July, perhaps? I'm not sure of the date. Who were the targets of the RCMP interview after you had spoken with in investigators? I do not know. 
there was a series of questions posed regarding the chronology of lobbying by SNC Lavalin. Did they ask questions on certain ministers? No. When I was interviewed by the RCMP, it wasn't the behavior of ministers that was being questioned, it was the behavior of SNC Lavalin. Well, they can interview people who have to follow the Ethics Act. When you testified to the Justice Committee, the Ethics Commissioner had not completed his report and st stated since then that the Prime Minister violated the Act. And the conclusion was that his actions were inappropriate because it went against the rule of law. And Mr. Trudeau infringed upon Section 9 of the Act. You stated at the Justice Committee that Ms. Jody Wilson-Raybould defended, or rather had to make a decision, and do you maintain your position knowing that the Prime Minister broke the law? Apologies, I'm not sure I understand your question. The conclusion of the commissioner was that he broke the a section of the act, section 9. And during your testimony, you stated that the minister had been subject to illicit activities or illicit activities and the commissioner had concluded the opposite. The RCMP may have prematurely closed its investigation on the Prime Minister. You were questioned by the Ethics Commissioner and you stated that regarding the investigation, you were not questioned by the RCMP on the criminal aspects of the Prime Minister. You stated, as the previous Minister, I asked what I could or could not say. I was told not to talk about the minister's opinion and what are the things that you could not talk about at the time? I'm not sure. It was five years ago. Uh, Ms. Wilson-Raybould, before the committee and at an, during an interview, stated that she didn't believe that there were crim any criminal activities. Mr. Warnick, you have a decision to make you can shed a light on the potential criminal implication of the Prime Minister, Minister or keep it to yourself. Saying that you don't remember is up to you. History will remember what you say. Why did you try to influence the Attorney General? So, um, Mr. Bertold is, is, not, is, is not having the... I don't remember and the the, the non answers from Mr. Wernick, and you can see you can see in this actually this still that he's getting pretty angry, <laughs> um, and so he's just decided you know what fine, you want it you want to do this let's do this. Why did you influence Miss Raybould? So he's just going right for the jugular at this point. He's 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 not even he's not even beating around the bush anymore. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Angela Cordoso with a $2 super chat. It's really hard to follow this interpreter. Yeah, yeah. some are better than others. And we really love the Australian guy. Yeah, he's he, phenomenal. Yeah, he's great. He puts like the correct intonation in it. He tries to uh, make it like make it match the tone of the person who's speaking um, just in English. Um, so we always love when he's on. But uh, unfortunately, some interpreters are, are not quite as animated. Yeah, and there's a there's a Scottish uh, lady, or at least she sounds like she has a Scottish accent. She's excellent as well. So um, it's just it all depends. Um, anyway, we're about 300 likes behind everybody, 150 likes away from some memberships that we're gonna drop once we get to 2,000. So um, keep pounding on that like. Like, uh, well, I, I'm not gonna advocate any violence for any liberal uh, politicians. Don't here. <laughs> um, behave. But uh, pound it, pound it like. You mean it. There you go. 
Close with perspective with the ten dollars super chat. Uh, acquisitions and partnerships section in Wikipedia for Atkins Realis is the tip of the iceberg. Golders was the largest company internationally until WSP buyout twenty twenty one is the reason. Thank you very much. I have nothing to add to what I've said to the Justice Committee and what I said to the Commissioner during the interview. Do you believe that my question was a threat? <laughs> that was a question. Is that a question, Mr. Berthold? For Mr. Wernick? Please repeat the question. Did you find that my question was threatening? when I talked about the impact on your career as a whole and how you will be judged? No. When a prime minister sends his clerk to have a discussion with a minister, that minister knows that the prime minister has the ultimate control on their career. Is it normal that minister Wilson-Raybould felt threatened by how you alluded to the Prime Minister in talking with her because that was the feeling. Please, uh, brief response. You have all of that in the Commissioner's report. Thank you, Mr. Berthold. What a garbage non-answer. But don't worry, folks. Don't worry. Um, uh, Nilik with a five dollar super chat. This is what bothers me about NDP, uh, because you'd think uh, they were dumb, but then hear them ask smart questions and realize uh, they are corrupt and self-serving. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing, eh? Um, you get back rack, you get green, and they can ask some really solid questions, and then they just back bad policies and bad governments, and it just makes you just shake your head. Yeah, so it's not incompetence or stupidity that's like making them so awful it, it really does seem like a choice yeah best for digital with a ten dollar super chat look up former snc level and executive sammy uh um bibawi uh who was sentenced for eight years for corruption and kickbacks to libyan dictator Gaddafi's son sammy pocketed 70 million this is the company's tr uh that, that trudeau helped Absolutely. Mr. G with a 279 super chat. Last one to hit like is a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> so you better make sure you hit that like button. Uh, Ryan Poplinski, member comment for four months. Uh, congrats on your milestone interview. We will all be in communal living. I also multiply your annual income by four. That's approximate mortgage pre-approval. Yeah, absolutely. David Edwards with a $5 super chat. You gave all the paperwork on the Norman affair because you guys railroaded him, but then you are in shit. You stall for for years, then redact everything. Yep, that's exactly it. Lloyd Cameron with a $2 super chat. Thank you very much. And Danny with a $7 super chat. If I'm not mistaken, the head of the RCMP is assigned by the PM. If so, where is the neutrality? That's the question, isn't it, Daniel? That's the question. And we are... 57 likes away from 2,000, everybody. Let's get over that hump. All right, go ahead. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Chair, I just wanted to personally... Oh, yeah, we're not going to listen to House Father. Don't worry. Don't worry. it back so that Mr. Cooper gets extra time, or, or who's whoever's next. Peut-être Mr. Villeneuve par avoir trois, trois secondes. Oui, oui, mais j'ai donné un peu plus de... I did give extra time for Mr. Berthold, but it was 20 seconds. Mr. Villeneuve, you have two and a half minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Warnick, with all due respect, always, re always mentioning the five-year-old report and evading responses or not remembering is not good enough for the committee. I would like to ask you the following question. In the discussion that you had with Ms. Wilson-Raybould, you said, I believe that the Prime Minister is not asking you to do anything inappropriate or to interfere. 
He's asking you to use all of the tools at your disposal legally and etc. I would like your comments on that, please. You have the, interpre the interpretation made by the Commissioner. Yes, but I would like your response. I don't have anything to add. That is not good enough. I don't have any additional questions. One moment, Mr. Wilmer. Okay, so Wilmer got so pissed off that he's like, I don't have any more questions. And the, uh, unfortunately, the interpreter didn't, didn't convey that. Yeah. So he 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 had like a, I think five, five or six minutes. minutes. Yeah. And he asked one question, right? Because he's just like, screw, it. like like this is pointless. Why am I wasting my time asking questions that aren't going to get answered? Right. So now this is where John Broussard, he starts to get annoyed. So uh, clips where with perspectives with a $10 super chat as a senior estimator in the Enviro geotech drilling industry for the largest company in North America. I can say I quote 5% of the SNC jobs, but 90% of all federal contracts are SNC held sobbed out. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you very much for, uh, uh, for that, uh, that background information. There, yeah. Sounds like the GC strategies of the, uh, the drilling world? Of the drilling world, yeah. yeah. You're an experienced uh, government employee. You understand that your appearance before committee is protected by parliamentary privilege. Members have privilege to ask questions, and they expect mm -hmm. that they're going to be directly answered. So my expectation as the chair on behalf of this committee, Mr. Wernick, is that you're going to answer those questions. Monsieur Vilmier, un minute et 45 secondes. Recommence, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Monsieur le Président. One minute, 45 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Warnick, on what was quoted earlier, that the Prime Minister wasn't asking to do anything illegal, but to use any tools at the disposal of Ms. Re Wilson Raybould, there was some hesitation. There's some things that are unsaid in there. I would like your comments on that discussion, please. From whose perspective? You stated, I don't believe that the Prime Minister is asking you to interfere, do something illegal. He's asking you to use the legal tools at your disposal, which could lead someone to believe something. What is that? I don't know. I don't have any other questions. Merci, uh, Monsieur. Thank you, Monsieur Villemur. To Mr. Green for two and a half minutes. Mr. Green, I'm, uh, I'm going to start you again. You're on mute. Go ahead. You're very gracious. Thank you very much. For, um, I'm for just going to pick seconds. up on that. I, I wasn't around, obviously, when this happened. Uh, certainly, the Honorable Murray Rankin and Charlie and others from my, my caucus likely would have dealt with this. Uh, so help me just get a sense for, you know, when you when when the telephone conversation happens between you and the former attorney general, and you say the prime minister is in a kind of a mood, um, and there's a and there's an assertion that he wanted her to shelf the prosecution, and and it says in quotes that that he's pretty he's in a pretty firm frame of mind about this. So I'm a bit worried. What would you be worried about? This is your language from the recorded conversation. Yeah, you're asking me to dredge up memories from five years ago, and, and uh, I gave my, my testimony on all of this to the Justice Committee and to the Commissioner. To the best of my recollection, this was an issue about the Minister's role as a member of Cabinet and the, and the, the point of order, Chair. Cabinet as a team. Point, point of order. Hang on a second, Mr. Wernick. Uh, Mr. Barrett, on your point of order, please. Chair, you intervened uh, in the previous round uh, with very clear expectations about what's supposed to happen. Um, Mr. Green's question was very straightforward to the witness, and the witness is now saying that he gave testimony about something that hadn't happened at the time. When he came before the Justice Committee, the recording that Mr. Green is, is referencing hadn't yet been released. Mr. Wernick didn't know he'd been caught. And so the expectation of the committee, of course, is, as you said, that the witness is going to answer the questions, not simply say, I've answered that question before. However, Chair, um, for your consideration, of course, uh, committee can 
um, can formally order that the, uh, that the witness answer the questions, and if he refuses, then it is a violation of this committee's privilege, which would need to be reported to the House. But I, would, I, I don't think it needs to come to that, but just think that perhaps um, one more urging and an opportunity for, for Mr. Green to restate his question uh, so that we can get an actual answer from the witness. Okay, th thank you for that intervention, uh, Mr. Barrett. That is a valid point of order. Uh, Mr. Warnick, I am now starting to get into one of those moods that uh, you spoke of with the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, um, you know that we're not about clickbait. We, you, we, you know that we try not to sensationalize things. So when I say on Twitter that all hell broke loose, we're not there yet. <laughs> this is the ramp up to it. We're not there yet. But, you know, I do have to say I love how the conservative chairs in particular are, you know, they're they're calm and they're cool and collected, but... Like, you know you're in shit. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's like your grandfather looking at yeah. you and saying, I am not happy. Right? Yeah. Um, and um, and, and here's, here's the in, very interesting thing. And it's very important. So the question was from, from uh, Matthew Green to Mr. Wernick. He was talking about something that happened on the phone call, on the leaked phone call. Uh, that actually came to light. And he was quoting Wernick when he was talking to Jody Wilson Raybould on that phone call. Wernick responds, Well, I've, 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 you know, s said all this to, to the Justice Committee. What Barrett had said is that that's interesting because the phone call hasn't been leaked by the time you spoke to the Justice Committee. So, you can tell that Wernick is lying here because, well, dude, you couldn't have said anything and given your remarks based on that conversation to the Justice Committee because nobody knew it had even happened by the time you sat down with them. It was only leaked after the fact. So that is a very key moment in this committee hearing. Very key. So just to uh, just to uh, uh, to put that in uh, in the northern perspective, and thank you everybody for getting us to two thousand likes. Amen to that. And uh, Fox dropping ten gifted northern perspective memberships to everybody as a personal thank you from Fox and I. Thank you, thank you, David Edwards with a two dollars super chat. Uh, I wasn't behind. You were behind on reading costs. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll take that date. We'll take that on the chin. Uh, Yuji Tai with a five dollar uh, super chat. I'm wondering if Jordan Peterson, not particularly, can become an effective. <laughs> Maybe. Um, At with five gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much for that. Four twenty hitter with a two dollar super chat. Cartman, you will respect my authority. Yeah, I was gonna try and get that for tonight's. A committee meeting but we just we we left at noon and didn't get home until eight o'clock so yeah i did not sit down in front of this computer until 8 p.m saturday saturday yeah. i promised ryan paplinkzy with a 279 super chat mp barrett is excalibur <laughs> so who's holding him as arthur that's the question uh and nilik with a two dollar super chat go brassard take no crap from this guy hell yeah tony pedipos with a 14 dollar super chat i love all that you guys do i am proud to be a member of this group and you should be proud of what you do for canadians thanks to the groups as well oh thank you that was very kind um we have uh one that i apologize we skipped over it's from clips with perspective it says thank you i've been screaming at the top of my lungs for that statement <laughs> excellent and uh, uh, I'm glad Fox grabbed that because that's not on my list. Uh, Richard Hepner with a uh, gifted Northern Perspective membership. Thank you very much for that, uh, Richard. And whoever received it, make sure you give Richard a thank you. Diane Sylvain with a $10 super chat. The first time I listened to this, I was asking Wernick questions and raising my own points of order to his not recalling to, be, to the screen, talking to myself, LOL, it only does get worse. Uh, or does it get better, Diane? That's the question. And sorry, I'm not sure if we read this one. It says, uh, this one's also from Close with Perspective. Uh, it says, SNC Lavalin has landed more than 100 government contracts since Trudeau ethics controversy, combined worth about 25 million between January of 2019 and June of 2020. That's a lot of money in a year and a half. 
And another one from Closer Perspective with a $10 super chat. A consortium that includes SNC Lavalin has been selected by Ontario as the preferred bidder for Toronto's multi billion dollar Eglinton Light Rail Transit contract. Delay makes sense? Hmm. Interesting. Jury Savoy with a $5 super chat. I hope not, uh, not as bad as Carbon Tax Committee, a uh, Liberal MP. Oh, I, th I think it's worse, Jerry. Uh, Katie Cat, member for five months. Hi, all MP supporters, Cypher and Fox. I have been listening in one ear and doing my daughter's nails with the other. <laughs> there you go. Happy, happy Easter, Easter all. all. Yes, happy Easter. I am uh, I'm asking you to answer the questions directly. Mr. Green, I'm not going to start your clock. Uh, restart. I'm going to ask you to uh, restate your question and the expectation of this committee, because they do have privilege, uh, Mr. Wernick, to ask these questions is for you to answer them. So, Mr. Green, go ahead. I'm going to give you as much time as you need. Thank you very much. And, and this was referring to the December 19, 2018 conversation that had been recorded mm -hmm. when 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 you told Ms. Um, wilson Raybolt that Mr. Trudeau was in a kind of a mood and, in her words, wanted to shelf the prosecution of the Montreal-based engineering firm. And and I quote, these are your words as recorded and, and distributed, he's in a pretty firm frame of mind about this, so I'm a bit worried. And then you go on to say, I'm worried about a collision then. Because he's in a pretty firm, because he's pretty firm about this. I just saw him a few hours ago, and this is really important to him. So I raise that, sir, because in the context of previous testimony you just provided in this committee, you talked about feeling intimidated, and or not, maybe not you feeling intimidated, but where where that line could be crossed. Um, but yet, as as was mentioned earlier, when you are sent a messenger from the prime minister's office that talks about a mood that talks about a collision course. Like, what did you mean by that? So um, this is an interesting bit of uh, interaction that's happened here at committee. Um, if you recall, when Matthew Green was asking his question the first time, he was very brief. Why was he brief? He was on the clock. Um, when all of this business about the point of order came up by Mr. Barrett, and Mr. Barrett came to the, came to the advocacy of Matthew Green because Barrett knows that this is a very good question, and it's a question that needs to be answered. So he's he's going to support another MP regardless of party in order to try to get that answered. Um, then you have um, uh, John Brassard telling Matthew Green, "I'm not going to start your clock. Take as long as you need," because John Brassard knows what. Um, what Matthew Green is reading from. He's reading from that telephone transcript that was leaked. And I think they kind of figured where Matthew Green would go, and that's exactly where Matthew Green did go. So because Matthew Green had unlimited time, he read an extended section now of that transcript to provide even greater context to his question and to give Canadians a bit more information of what was actually in that telephone recording. So it was a, an, an interesting bit of unspoken cooperation between the Conservatives, or the Conservative MPs, the Conservative Chair, and the NDP MP that are all trying to extract some answers from, from Mr. Wernick. So it's, it's, it's a very fascinating bit of unspoken cooperation around the table here. So, first of all, I'm trying my best to respond to the questions and reconstruct a sequence of events. I apologize to the members if I've got events of five years out of sequence and whether my testimony, which happened twice, was before or after other events. I don't have the chronology clear in my head. Um, so if I mixed it up, I apologize to the committee. You're talking, I presume, about my first appearance at the Justice Committee? Or are I'm you talking, talking about the... I'm the, talking about the recording that came out. Yeah. And, and I would say that it's a lot easier for you to operate in this committee if you just answer the questions, then you don't have to think about what you did and you don't have to think about timelines, just answer. Well, them. actually the timelines matter to the answers. So yes, uh, I do want to know uh, the sequence of events. And, December and 19th, 2018. Right, and that conversation was available to the commissioner. So um, I'm, I'm not sure what your question is again still. I, I'm trying to answer wow. it, I, I, what is your question? You said the prime minister was in kind of a mood and that the attorney general was in a collision course. I'm gonna put to you, sir, that sounds like a threat. That sounds like when you say that you arrived from meeting him a few hours ago and you came to her with that message, that sounds like a threat. Certainly was not intended as a threat and it's not the interpretation of the commissioner. 
Those are my questions. So Matthew Green's not happy. Nobody's happy because this guy's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to say a bunch of word salad. What's your question? You heard my question. You absolutely heard it. You hear everything else I say. You absolutely hear it. Yeah, he's just being flippant. Yep. And here's the thing. he's Wernick is trying to get through his committee as unscathed as possible. That's his goal. So from just like an evaluation of him being a witness trying to escape committee, he's doing a very, very good job because he's a, he's allowing himself to avoid answering the questions he doesn't want to answer. So just from a strategic point of view, Wernick is doing a very, very good job. It's frustrating as all heck, and he should be answering these questions, but it is what it is, and th this is where we're going. But not over yet, folks. Uh, Glenn Stewart with a $5 super chat. First 70 letters uh, to the MPs, Inc. is now uh, low and cannot print more. Folks, write the MPs and let them know your feelings about the non-confidence vote. Yes, yes please do. Actually, when we were finishing up with Mr. Brock today, um, you know, one of the things that I had asked him, well, I said I was very concerned about Bill C-63 and what can I do? And he said, write your MP and encourage your viewers to write their MPs as well. So, I mean, this is an MP telling me to tell everyone, write your MPs. So it's definitely, definitely important. Yep. And it's definitely something that you can do. And Clisper Perspectives with a $50 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Um, ready for it? Rabbit hole moment. Uh, the charges allege that between 2001 and 2011, SNC Lavalin paid 48 million in bribes in Libya to officials uh, in the government uh, to Gaddafi. At the same time, the company defrauded Libyan organizations of $130 million. Wow. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And wow. and, and that's not going to you know really do anything in, in Canada, right? It's like. And this is why SNC was being investigated, right? This is why. So, but this gets this gets better, folks. Uh, Trish Pro, the five dollars super chat. Oh man, am I ever sounding like my dad? I'm yelling at my stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to not yell at the stream because it was two thirty in the morning last night, and uh, Fox and uh, and our son were asleep. sleeping. Yeah. So. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Cooper for five minutes. Go ahead. What the hell is going on? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wernick. Uh, two days before Jody Wilson-Raybould testified before the Justice Committee, uh, you drafted Order in Council 2019-0105 that partially waived Cabinet confidentiality, correct? No. Um, I had left all of the issues about confidences and divulgation to the uh, to the deputy clerk, so she would have supervised the drafting of it. It's possible I signed it off as the clerk. No, I don't remember. But... You had no involvement whatsoever. You had no I... conversations with the prime minister, and the deputy clerk had no conversations with the prime minister. As soon as I was invited to the justice committee, I stepped back and recused myself from all of the issues around document production. You recused yourself entirely. Okay. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to comment, for example, on why the order in council was drafted in a way that prevented Jody Wilson Raybould from providing her full version of events. I did not participate in the drafting of it. I'm, I'm sure we would have been trying to strike some sort of balance between the confidentiality of those cabinet meetings and uh, Ms. Wilson and the specifics that Ms. Wilson Raybould was going to be asked to testify about. Jody Wilson. I did not participate. Jody Wilson. I didn't participate in the drafting of that order. So is it accurate to say that you recused yourself entirely from the drafting of that order in council and any discussions that may have taken place about expanding Point of order, the scope chair. of that? Point of order, Chair. I understood that we were meeting today to talk about an RCMP investigation. That was to the very heart of that issue. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Mr. I'm, uh, so I've got the floor, I wanna, Mr. Cooper. I, but just go but ahead. so so rehashing something that happened five years ago that has been subject to numerous uh, um, meetings of a whole bunch of different committees yeah, in Mr. Parliament. We're talking about the RCMP, and none of these questions have to do with an RCMP investigation, which. 
My thank, understanding, thank you Mr. For the, Chair, you brought that he was here to talk about what the motion was with regard to. Maybe we could just stick to that. You were thank asking you. about my Twitter in the last uh, round. Uh, Michael, just hang on a sec. Thank <laughs> so, so, isn't this rich, everybody? Um, so Pam Damoff, who spent 80% of her time complaining about getting email and, uh, and, and Michael Barrett's Twitter account and complaining about memes is now taking a, a perspective of, well, Michael Cooper, uh, I thought we were supposed to be here talking about the SNC Lavalin affair. Um, uh, but the rules don't apply to me because I was trying to, you know, get pity from everybody and claim the victim card. But, you know, he's not allowed to actually ask questions about the SNC Lavalin affair. I thought the member's time is the member's time and that if they need to talk about something else in order to lead up to their questions on the topic that they're permitted to do so. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it can change from committee to committee, but when, when it comes to the ethics committee, John Broussard allows you to do whatever you want. Yeah, he usually gives the members some latitude. So, um, and this is where everything starts to go off the rails. So, um, so buckle up, everyone. Uh, Midianso with a two, or sorry, $10 super chat. I still do not trust NDP and Matthew Green, nor should you, nor should you. Uh, they are still in the penalty box for me. Too many things in the past, and I am an all orange writing. Yeah, so that's the thing. Um, don't, uh, don't confuse us saying that, uh, Matthew Green asking great questions and, and doing a good job in, in committee. Don't conflate that with the NDP is great. <laughs> Um, or that even that particular MP is great. Is great. Yeah. I mean, a broken clock is right two times a day. So because Matthew Green still voted non-confidence, he was still in the counter protest to the uh, Million March for Kids. Um, so he was there's there's a whole, whole slew of things that Matthew Green does wrong. But what we try and do is when we identify something positive, we we point it out. Um, well, because in politics and life in general things are very rarely black and white most things are a shade of gray so mps that we don't agree with that we don't agree with their policies we don't agree with their behavior they can still ask good questions sometimes now if the ndp woke up tomorrow and started agreeing with a lot of the stuff that the conservatives would say we would say that's great ndp you guys are actually coming around and we would you know, start saying a lot of positive things about well, the NDP. and put your money where your mouth is. Let's exactly. go. So exactly. So, um, so we just call it as we see it. Uh, and if the conservatives ask, ask, you know, dumb questions, we will call that out as well. So, um, Clifford's perspective with a ten dollars super chat. It does have everything to do with Canada. It was the Enviro Geotech drilling reports for infrastructure purposes. You drill for yourself, make your own reports, build based on self-reported sampling. Thank you very much for that. And Goko Donnie with a ten dollars super chat. Get this child a soother. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. And we have Danny with a G seventy nine super chat. Do you think that Ray Bolt uh maybe called the committee? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, because they have all of her notes. She took I she took immaculate notes with all of these interactions with Trudeau's cronies because she didn't she smelled something really, really rotten going on. So um, they may not even need uh, her to ter her to testify again. Uh, Nilik with a two dollars super chat. She's not so bright if she's defending clear BS. Uh, absolutely. Hey, she she used to be the parliamentary secretary for uh, uh, Mark Mendicino, so that, that tells you all you need to know. Mister Excuses with a two dollars super chat. Liberals in full on kamikaze mode this week. Yep. Full bookie with a five dollars super chat. Meme Pam until she cries and then make memes <laughs> of her crying. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, we try not to be cruel. Uh, Selby with a 279 super chat. John Broussard is my MP. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, send him a letter. Uh, give him a phone call for us. You know, and this is one thing that um, David Sweet had told us, uh, who was a former MP. He's, he's not an MP currently anymore. But one of the things he told us was that he used to love getting emails that would say like, hey, you're doing an awesome job. Keep it up. So if your MP is a conservative and you think they're doing an awesome job, just flip them a quick email. Hey, I saw that, what you did in the House today, what you did in committee. That was great. Keep going. They love that. 
Uh, closer perspective with a $10 super chat. Say I'm a house contractor. I need electrical and they legally, uh, and they say legally it'll cost $5,000. Well, contractor knows how to do it. He does it for a thousand and banks 4,000 plus allotted amount in contract. Sounds about right. Sounds like what they're doing with uh, a rive scam kind yep. of. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Ms. Damoff, I uh, appreciate your uh, your words. Mr. Cooper, you have the floor, and you can continue on this. And I expect, I did stop your clock, and I expect that you're going to come back. I expect Mr. Wernick to answer the question that right. I asked. Right, go ahead, please. <laughs> Sorry, I've lost the thread. What was the question? I stopped my clock. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. I, Cooper. I, I asked you, Mr. Wernick, before I was interrupted, uh, that, uh, to clarify, that you had, from time that you had appeared at the Justice Committee, but you entirely removed yourself from discussions concerning the scope of the order in council and any further discussions or consideration of expanding the scope of that order in council. That's correct. And everybody concerned was interviewed by the commissioner in the months that followed. And to, to Ms. Damoff's point, uh, it is of relevance to the issue of an RCMP investigation because we heard testimony from the RCMP that the central or strongest theory towards establishing obstruction of justice was whether the Prime Minister removed Jody Wilson Raybould uh, to get an Attorney General who would make a decision the Prime Minister wanted and that the RCMP was impeded by the invest their investigation to determine that as a result of the parameters of that order in Council. Uh, Mr. Wernick, when you appeared at the Justice Committee back in 2019, uh, you characterized your uh, interactions and those of the Prime Minister and his officials with the Minister of Justice, Jody Wilson-Raybould, as so-called lawful advocacy to appropriately ra raise public interest considerations to the minister, particularly that SNC would move its headquarters from Montreal, resulting in the loss of at least 9,000 jobs. I'm going to ask you, what evidence did the government have that SNC Lavalin would move its headquarters from Montreal if a deferred prosecution agreement was not entered into? Okay, so this is... Um this is a pretty key point to um, to the uh, to the whole investigation. Um, now, before we uh, we continue on this path, you heard some uh, some references to something called order and council and all that question. So that's probably going to be really confusing for everybody. So what he's talking about is when the RCMP um, requested. Uh, uh, information you know that was held in cab uh, cabinet confidence um an order in council basically a, an order was written to the rcmp stating here's what you're going to get and it's everything that you've already asked for and nothing new so that's what that order in council was that cooper is referencing um and he seems to probably think that um that Michael Wernick was involved in drafting that order in council. That's why he was asking him these questions. And that order in council uh, prevented the RCMP from getting any further information that may have given them, you know, more clues as to what happened and possibly lead them to charge Justin Trudeau with obstruction of justice. So that's, that's where that whole line of questioning is coming from. The next line of questioning that he has opened up here is around the... Um, uh, the, oh, what, what was it? Um, Sorry, I was, I was out of the room trying to silence the dogs from waking up our son. <laughs> deferred prosecution order. That's what it was. Um, and that SNC Lavalin was threatening to leave their headquarters and move their headquarters out of Montreal. Um, so he's asked... He's asked Michael Warnick, what evidence does the government have that SNC was actually going to do that? So that's what we're going to get into now. LKB, member for four months with a member comment, enjoying tonight's in-flight movie selection. Uh, thank you, we aim to please. And Goko Downey with five gifted and earned perspective memberships. Thank you, thank you very much. And we are about 200 likes behind. If we could get uh, up there, that would be great. Um, getting our likes up 
uh, over the last half hour or so has upped our concurrent viewers to 2428, so that's great. Let's uh, get some more likes and spread the word on the SNC Lavalin live stream with Northern Perspective tonight. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we went over this at the Justice Committee. There were there were representations by SNC, and there were public statements made by SNC, and there were market disclosures by SNC. Mr. Mr. Wernick, you must have known that SNC had a financing agreement with the Case Depot that required it to maintain its headquarters in Montreal for another six years until 2024. It was public knowledge that SNC had entered a 20-year lease at its Montreal headquarters. It was also public knowledge that SNC had announced major renovations to its headquarters in Montreal worth millions. And two days before your infamous December 19, 2018 telephone call with Jody Wilson-Raybould, in which you specifically raised the issue Chair, of, of 9,000 jobs at SNC moving its headquarters. Hang on, Mr. CEO... Uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh... So, Mr. Cooper is telling Canadians the sequence of events that happened in SNC-Lavalin, and the Liberals don't like it. Of course they don't. They don't like it. Well, because it makes their prime minister look criminal. Yep. Yep. So this is a very key section to pay close attention to, folks. Go ahead with your point of order, Mr. Chahal. And I'll, I'll just advise you that uh, it's been practice in this committee that I've given members their time to ask questions on a broad range of things in relation to this. If it's if it's to object to the the line of questioning to Mr. Uh, Cooper, uh, Mr. Chair, I haven't even made my point of order no, yet, so I'm I, not sure what you're objecting. Go to. ahead. I'm not objecting to anything. I want to hear what well, you have to say. Mr. Uh, Hang on, Mr. Cooper, to please. My line of Mr. Now, Mr. Mr. Cooper is interrupting my point of order, which I have not had the opportunity to make. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Mr. Chair, I would like the opportunity to present my point of order. I'd ask Mr. Co Cooper the relevance of his questioning. Yeah, and once yeah. again, chair, once yes. again, you have not let me finish, Mr. Barrett. You're not the chair. Yeah. Mr. Barrett, you're not the chair. If no, you let me Mr. finish, Mr. Mr. Chahal, I, I know which direction you're going. Well, on you do this. not, because I haven't finished my I sentence. I do know which direction you're going on this. I, all I would like to do is say the relevance to the point of order that Mr. Cooper, on your questioning with the RCMP. Hang on, hang on. Michael and Michael. I presented my point of order. I, 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 I want Mr. Chahal, Mr. Mr. Chahal, I want, I want you to go through the chair on this, okay? Don't go through yes. Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Chair. So you have, a you have a point of order that you're raising. State your like point of order succinctly, please, yes. and then we'll go from there. So okay. if I'm allowed to do so, I will raise my point of order succinctly. Um, I'd like to know what the relevance of the questioning provided by Mr. Cooper is, because this has nothing to do with the RCMP. Mr. Chalha, I've been chairing this committee now for 18 months, and in every circumstance that we've had discussions at this committee, I give members a broad latitude to discuss and ask questions that they feel are relevant to the situation with the expectation that they're going to bring it back. So I'm not, you're not issuing a point of order. Your, your, your point of order is actually very subjective. So Mr. Cooper, you have the floor. Go ahead, please. You have 53 seconds. Thank you for your point of order, Mr. Chalha. None other than two days. So. <laughs> uh, that was interesting. That's not going to be the last you hear from Mr. Oh Chalal either. So, uh, yeah. Um, this so I was is... going to say, that was, that was a little spicy, but not quite uh, what I was expecting. You were hyping it up a bit. Well, yeah. Just it, wait? Yeah. It, it's, okay. It, it continues. It continues. Um, so this is, uh, this is what we're, this is what's happening, folks. People don't like hearing or the Liberals don't like hearing the uh, the Conservatives actually calling out this stuff, right? They don't like hearing it, but Too it's bad. not up to them. It's not up to them. Close perspective by the $10 Super Chat. Secret time. Shh. Okay. No, everyone keep this a secret. <laughs> uh, ACOM and SNC relationship. ACOM sues uh, their way into federal contracts from current ownership, and SNC obtains the prime contract as a result. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. That is dirty. And Jarsha with a $2 super chat. This guy sounds like he's about to cry. Big baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he should cuddle up to ba Pam Damoff. I don't know. Before your infamous phone call with Jody Wilson-Raybould, in which you raised the issue of jobs at SNC moving, the CEO had publicly stated that SNC-Lavalin was committed to staying in Montreal. 
So why did you tell Jody Wilson-Raybould that jobs were on the line and there was a risk of SNC moving its headquarters when you had to have known that that simply wasn't true? That was my understanding at the time, and that the law that Parliament created in terms of deferred prosecution possible, agreements. How is it possible that that now, could have been your you, understanding at the time in the Mr. face of Mr. everything Mr. that Mr. I laid out? Let, 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 let him finish, please. Will you let me finish? Mr. Mr. You're badgering. Your answer is simply point of order. Mr. Mr. Cooper. Point of order. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cooper, for your line of questioning. That concludes your uh, time. We're going to now go to Mr. Baines. We have five minutes. Go ahead with your point of order, Mr. Chow. Once again, uh, I just want to acknowledge the witness is here to answer the questions, not to be interrupted by uh, the member uh, asking the questions. So if you ask a question, allow the member, uh, allow the, the witness to provide an answer. And it was, uh, I'd ask Mr. Cooper to Thank you. I, I, I get apologize the gist. for rudely interrupting the witness the, in the middle of his questioning. I get, the gist of, I get the gist of what you're, uh, what you're saying, Mr. Chahal. We're going to proceed with uh, Mr. Baines now for five minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. No, we're not going to proceed with Mr. Baines for five minutes. Don't worry, everybody. I'm not going to put you through that. Oh, thank you. Um, but uh, again, uh, Cooper is not getting the answer he wants. He doesn't have patience for people who waste time. So he's going to go after you. That's just, that's Cooper. That's what he does. And if anyone watches Cooper in committee, that's what he does. He gets into trouble sometimes be, uh, because of it. But you know what? He's getting answers. He is getting answers. So um, this is this is why I, I wanted everyone to see this. Like this, this, these exchanges, because you see how hard the conservatives are fighting here to actually get answers and and move this along, even if it's like literally an inch a day. They are moving forward. And it's a, it's a slog for them, but they're moving forward, even if it's just one inch at a time. So, um, all right, let's uh, take care of the administration, which uh, is a member comment uh, from Stephen Farr. Thank you very much. I wish I had a dollar for every time a liberal cry point of order. This is out of control, wasting people's question time. Well, the nice thing is, is Broussard keeps, stop the uh, clock. Yeah, yeah, and he'll just say, no, no, go ahead. I got you. I got your back. and specific redactions. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brock is coming up. Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Baines. That concludes our first uh, hour of questioning. We're now going to proceed to the second hour, which means we're going to reset the clock. And just a reminder to members that if there is an intervention, uh, then a point that needs to be made, that it comes through the chair. Uh, I don't want to have banter back and forth between members. And I'm also going to remind members as well that relevance is subjective. And so uh, I believe that members have their time to ask their questions. I also expect, as I said earlier, that members are going to come back to the point. So if you're interrupting because you don't like something you're hearing, that's too bad. Mr. Brock, you have six minutes. Go ahead. Broussard laying down the law. Too bad. Too bad, so sad, liberals. Uh, 420 hitter with a five dollar super chat point of order the witness is here to answer questions not to serve word salad that's a valid point of order in my opinion <laughs> uh, Robert McFallon with a five dollar super chat thanks for covering this uh, northern perspective is the real media well, thank, thank you very you. much for that thank you thank you we try we we really do thank you chair uh, mr. Wernick the focus of uh, my time with you will be on the concept of two-tier justice two-tier level of justice. But before I get to that, uh, today being uh, March the 19th, when were you invited? When did it come, when were you known that, when did you know that you were gonna be invited to this committee? Oh, I don't know, so about a week ago, I think. About a week I, ago? I check my emails, something like that, yeah. Okay. Okay, just before we go any further, what Brock is referring to when he says two-tier justice, 
he means there is one justice system for Canadians and a different justice system for the Prime Minister of Canada. That's what he's talking about when he's referring to two-tiered justice. Yeah, and we did actually speak about that with him a little bit today. So uh, when we do release the interview early next week, um, he'll expand on it then. I hope everyone le- likes the questions we ask. because <laughs> We thought they were pretty good questions. Uh, Hartzinger with a $2 super chat. Chalal and Danforth are both losing their seats. Yeah, most of them are. <laughs> Over a hundred of them are. So um, there's not too many Liberals that are not losing their seats. And then in the past week or so, what did you do to prepare for this meeting? It's just me and Google search. Just sorry, what? Just me and my Google search. I haven't spoken to anybody about this appearance. No, no, that wasn't, that wasn't the question. Um, how did you prepare? Did you review, for instance, your two transcripts of previous testimony at the Justice Committee? I read the commissioner's report, I downloaded and read the two committee appearances, and I uh, did a search for news articles. Okay, that's a good start. Now, we know that the ultimate conclusion from the Dion report is that the Prime Minister directly and through senior officials use various means to exert influence over Jody Wilson-Raybould, the authority of the Prime Minister, and his officers were used to circumvent, undermine, and ultimately to discredit the decision of the Director of Public Prosecution, as well as the authority of Jody Wilson-Raybould as the Crown's Chief Law Officer. I'm going to quote from her book, Indian in the Cabinet, that she says, the efforts to pressure me either directly or through Jessica continued from September the 17th and onward, uh, ultimately, seven, sorry, 11 officials from the Prime Minister's office, the Privy Council office, and the office of the Minister of Finance made attempts. Over that four month period, there were approximately 10 phone calls, 10 meetings about SNC Lavalin, culminating in a phone call I had with the clerk of the Privy Council on December 19th. Now, you didn't know that you were being uh, audio taped, did you? No. No. And unlike yourself, because I did review uh, with some great uh, scrutiny your uh, previous transcripts and your evidence from from the Justice Committee, you didn't take contemporaneous notes, unlike Jody Wilson-Raybould, did you, of all your interactions with her? No. So there was nothing that you could use to refresh your memory in advance of your appearance at Justice Committee four years ago, five years ago. Uh, between December and my appearance in February? No. Yes. Okay. Now, in your opening statements, I don't know if it's your first or second um, testimony, you talked about two-tier level of justice, but only in relation to the fact that SNC-Lavalin eventually did not receive the DPA and ultimately, as we know, pled guilty to one count of fraud. So that's not the focus of the question. The focus is... In my view, there is a perception among Canadians and a perception among numerous members, myself included, that there was a political uh, non-appetite by the RCMP to conduct a thorough investigation. Prior to the commissioner's attendance, not too long ago, they had roughly close to four years of investigating this particular matter. And unlike the Ethics Commissioner, who essentially interviewed 14 witnesses, you being included, the RCMP interviewed four. Now, I know you've already opined that you're not going to talk about police operations, but given that discrepancy, do you think that there is a disconnect between the ter- in terms of how the Ethics Commissioner approached this investigation versus the RCMP? I think the Ethics Commissioner's mandate given to it by Parliament is about violations of the Conflict of Interest Act, and the RCMP would be looking at a threshold of potential violations of criminal law, so they would be looking at it with a different lens. But, but it is evidence... entirely up to the it's entirely up to the RCMP whether they pursue preliminary investigations, fact-finding, final investigations, or move on to laying of charges. That's their job. But the evidence is still the same. 
the evidence and the RCMP confirmed it, that they relied upon the evidence received from the ethics commissioner. The ethics commissioner was ultimately stymied and was upset that he was unable to complete a fulsome report due to the actions of the prime minister, which is exactly the same rationale the RCMP had used in closing up their investigation because they could not obtain further information from the prime minister. Were you aware of that? So I'm, a, I'm aware that that's what the commissioner wrote in his report. Yes, of course. Now, there's, there's two elements to any criminal charge. The RCMP were investigating obstruction of justice and intimidation of a justice participant. There's two elements. There has to be an act and there has to be a mental element, an intention to complete the act, known as actus reus mens rea. I don't want to get into legal complexities, but that is the ultimate test. Did you review the, uh, the testimony of the RCMP commissioner from a few weeks ago? No. All right. Now, I'm going back to uh, some of the evidence that... Um, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Braun. You get like 10 seconds I got, left. No, okay, yeah. no, no time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sabera for six. Okay. So I want to let Brock get through all of his stuff there. Um, so he's, he's really looking at the, the threshold at which, you know, the RCMP was at in order to, you know, potentially lay charges. And... He's implying that, you know, he believes that the RCMP had arrived at that threshold, but they didn't they didn't pursue it any further. And he's trying to, you know, get an opinion from from Mr. Wernick. Well, you know, do you think there was some trepidation there? Because I certainly think so. MP think so. Millions of Canadians across the country think so. Well, I suppose you don't want to be the guy who arrests a sitting prime minister and then he's not charged at or, and or not convicted. Like, I can, I can understand the hesitation because your career will be ruined. But if you're it's, wrong, but it's not really up to you to decide. Exactly. Don't do the job then. Yeah. Right? There's going to be some arrests you don't want to make. And it's, it's your duty to, do, like, to make those arrests. Uh, and Don Boulay, uh, I hope you asked Brock if he had any faith anymore in the RCMP. We asked something very similar. So, good. Th this means we asked all the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, I think you guys, based on, on what you're asking, if we asked him, uh, I think you're going to really enjoy the interview. Um, but uh, this is the thing, right? So, it's, it's obvious, I think, that something went, something went foul in the RCMP. The investigation went for four years. You only interviewed four people? That's one a year. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense whatsoever. The, 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 the ethics commissioner did his job within months. And you guys took four years, were not given any additional information other than the justice uh, minister like, or, or the ethics commissioner. That doesn't make any sense, guys. And you haven't explained it other than there was internal management issues. What does that mean? We don't know, and that's part of the problem. Okay, Justin Brown with a $7 super chat. Remember, it was Chalal who switched campaign signage of his opponents with his own. That apple definitely did not far, <laughs> fall far from the uh, illegal act, right? Because uh, I'm pretty sure that's vandalism. Uh, Glenn Stewart with a $10 super chat. I've heard from uh, friends and family and passengers on the local bus how they feel about the uh, government. Only 67% feel that all MPs are crooks and care only... Uh, oh, sorry, not only. Uh, about 67% feel that all uh, the MPs are crooks and care only for their pockets. I wouldn't say all the MPs. I think the Conservatives have a great roster of MPs. Um you know we've we've been able to interact with a few of them um our mp's conservative he's awesome i won't tell you who he is but he's great and uh, we got to meet mr brock today and again just really nice kind down-to-earth kind of guy so i think probably at least the conservatives from yeah. what i've been seeing are are really chill really down to earth and they want to do what's right for canadians I suspect that a lot of the liberal MPs, just kind of from what I've been hearing from 
insiders that we know, it sounds like a lot of the Liberal MPs are torn. I think that they see the party going in the wrong direction. They don't believe in what Justin Trudeau is doing. They know it's wrong for the country, but they don't have the strength to stand up and say anything. And I mean, that's not okay. I'm not making excuses for them. That's definitely not okay. But I don't think they're outright evil. Um, just a, a comment. I see uh, full wiki. When YouTube starts bombarding your live stream with ads, you know you're doing it right. Uh, good job, MP. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Um, we So when you're setting a live stream, you have options. Uh, you have three options for, for the ads, um, which is conservative, which is the middle, you know, balanced or a lot. We always choose uh, like conservative. as few as possible, we, yeah. Because we don't, you know, we don't want people to be constantly interrupted on the live stream. So we do whatever we can to make sure that this is a <laughs> as as ad free of a, a, a viewing experience as possible. Um, because we appreciate the time that everybody is giving us. Uh, okay, uh, making sure didn't miss anything, and I think we're up to date. So uh, let's see who we're going with next. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, it's great to be on the, this committee today, and happy Tuesday. No, we're not listening to this guy. <laughs> this liberal is a post turtle when it comes to committee. He just they they send him in the committee, and he doesn't really know what's going on and says he doesn't know what's going on and then proceeds to ask silly questions for the rest of his time it doesn't make any sense other than to just waste everybody's time i don't even know who that guy is you don't need to know who he is fair enough and responsibilities that you held for both uh both the governments whether it was a conservative government or a liberal government uh your service speaks for itself and i want to say thank you uh chair i'm i'm finished with my remarks thank you mr Cervera, monsieur vilmier for uh, six minutes Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Monsieur Warnick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Warnick, as mentioned earlier, we are here today because of a motion regarding why the RCMP did not carry out an, in an investigation. We've heard from the RCMP and those responsible for the investigation. And we've all wanted to ask you a question regarding cabinet confidences. I understand the use of cabinet confidences, being able to share opinions without being afraid of having one's head ripped off. When you decided not to disclose documents at the time, I would like to know why. As I stated, I did not participate in the decision of sharing documents the decision was made by my successor. All right. If I come back to when you were clerk and a hypothetical situation where you would have had to decide on a disclosure of documents, what would you have based yourself on to decide whether or not to disclose some documents in part or not at all? I did not participate. These decisions need to be seen as independent and nonpartisan. That is why, because I was immersed in this at the time, I could not be seen as independent. And as I said in response to another question, if it is a commission of inquiry, or if it's a criminal investigation, we should give access to as many things as possible. You were a clerk who did not participate in the decision, but you were in function for a while, and you stated the reasons why cabinet confidences might be disclosed. It does depend on the use of those documents and protecting information. Do you believe that parliamentarians should have access to these documents? I believe that it's not 
a clear cut case. There are cases where redactions would be necessary. For example, for intelligence or foreign information, personal information. Yes, there is parliamentary privilege, but you can't ask for information from my doctor, for example. I think that there's a matter of relevance, of course. I'd like to explain where my question comes from. In the case of a lab in Winnipeg, we received 400 pages of documents that were redacted and when I participated in this, it was preventative redaction, over redaction, in fact. In certain cases, do we tend to not disclose because we're afraid or that or do we over redact and in the Winnipeg case it was going from completely redacted to not so redacted I think it's a case by case matter and when we're talking about information given by a CSIS and when we talk about foreign interference I believe that in those cases, there needs to be a balance between transparency and protecting this information. In the SNC Lavalin case, it wasn't a matter of national security. And so we're wondering how we can see the cabinet confidences as well as the need to know of parliamentarians. This is the main issue here because the RCMP commissioner stated not having access to all the information and because he didn't have access to all that information, no charges were, were laid. But as parliamentarians, we have to see who decides the balance between the necessity for secrecy and transparency. You worked for such a long time in the public service and your point of view is important. It really has to be a case-by-case -case basis. Balance between confidentiality, public interest. I'm not sure if I can explain these principles clearly. I have always tried to disclose the most documents as possible, depending on the investigation, criminal investigation. Thank you very much. So, this is uh, the the uh, unfortunately the interpreter is not doing any of this justice. But all of this is going to the root of like Vilmer is is trying to get Wernick to say, you know, what's the criteria for this? You know, we received all of these, you know, four hundred pages of redacted documents. From the Winnipeg labs, you know, and they were over redacted, and in the end, almost none of them were redacted because they they didn't need to be. So, like, who 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 makes these decisions? And here's the thing: like, Wernick then says, "Well, you know, you got to be careful. It's a case by case basis. You know, there could be privacy information and everything like that." Uh, hello, it's law enforcement. You don't think law enforcement has personal information of people? You don't think they need access to personal? Like, you don't think they can keep that confidential? It's it's kind of in their job description to do that. So when the RC, like, I don't know, in my opinion, when the RCMP comes knocking on the government uh, relating to a criminal investigation, I don't think that the government should be able to say anything. I think that the RCMP should be able to say, give us all these documents and give them, give them to us now. Government can't say, well, you know, you can't see them. Sorry, that doesn't fly. Because yeah, isn't withholding evidence like uh, a crime in and of itself? Yeah, it's it's basically interfering. Well, not even basically, it's interfering within the investigation of law enforcement. And then you know, people in the government will say, "Well, you know, um, the government has to be able to redact, you know, what it doesn't feel is relevant to the investigation." Okay, so, but if the government is the entity that RCMP is investigating then they can't be allowed to do that. In that case, the RCMP should hire somebody and 
sign some agreements, and then they're the ones that reviews the documents before it passes to the RCMP. It shouldn't be, you know, again, solicitor client privilege where the government is the client and the uh, and the solicitor and, and the solicitor, but that's how it's been working, so it doesn't make any sense. So, anyway, I think uh, I think that's the crux of uh, of Vilmir here. So we're gonna skip past him. But before we do that, JD, a member comment for two months. The RCMP need a leader like Grady Judd in Florida. Uh, they need a strong one, that's for sure, and one that is committed to justice. Sean, member for five months. Well, if the show if the show fits, wear for, wear it. <laughs> Possibly shoe. Probably. Yeah. Because E is right next to W. Thank you very much, Sean. Well, you know, my, my phone will autocorrect certain words to certain other words, even though, like, they're both real actual words. They're not misspelled. So Yeah, your knows? phone will be like, hey, that valid word, that's not what you meant. Here's another valid word. <laughs> yeah. And Norm Nicholson with a $10 super chat. Cypher, I love how you spell relief. Skip this MP. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. On to Mr. Green. Green for six. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Mr. Warnick, picking up from our um, our last exchange when you suggested that Commissioner Dion didn't come to the conclusion um, that there was a, a threat or, or an act of intimidation between yourself as an emissary of the Prime Minister to Ms. Jody Wilson-Raybould, I refer to the Warnick Report, page three, paragraph 14, when it is stated that on the basis of the evidence gathered, he concluded in paragraph 285 of the Trudeau II report that individuals who acted under the direction or authority of the prime minister in this matter could not have influenced the attorney general simply by virtue of their position. My reading of that says not necessarily that that didn't happen, but that by basis of your position, the commissioner didn't believe that you were in a position to provide that influence on the Attorney General because you were not the Prime Minister. Um, so that's a bit of a different reading. What, what's your response to that? Well, Parliament created the Commissioner to make these judgments of interpretation and that's his interpretation. And so it's based on the evidence gathered uh, and we're, we're here today because there's a, a thought that perhaps not all the information was present. Would, it, would your understanding be that the commissioner would have had access to all the information necessary to make that decision? I don't know. I don't, I mean, my, my conversation with the attorney general was a matter of public record before he completed his report. You had referred on multiple occasions that uh, almost as a warning that a, a scenario where um, the, the government directing the police leads to an authoritarian culture. Is that an appropriate uh, summary of, of your remarks? I think that it is very important in a free and democratic society that the police make decisions about uh, operations and investigations um, independently. Pay attention and when to these they statements. don't, how would you, you, I believe you characterize that as being authoritarian, correct? I think it's what I'm, we is what we is what we see in um, you know partial democracies in authoritarian countries, and you can look at the headlines in a number of countries: Poland, Turkey, Russia, others, uh, where um, uh, you know uh, directing the, or intimidating the police in terms of who they should investigate, who they should arrest, who charges should be played. That's that is um, not a full blown democracy. And and what what would your opinion be for the same scenarios where pressure is applied to the prosecution? and not the police. Same thing. I mean, that's why, uh, that is why the Harper government created an independent director of public prosecutions. That only dates from 20 years ago, and that was created specifically to ensure the independence of the prosecutorial service. Why did you resign? As I said in my letter, I felt I couldn't do the job anymore. Okay. I think that's all, that's all that I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So David Warnick says, if a government interferes within the prosecutorial or law enforcement processes, that is akin to an authoritarian government. Everybody heard that. File that. We're going to need it later. Uh, short sack with a $2 super chat. Solicitor and client. That's how it's not working, right? 
because uh, they're both solicitor and client. Uh, just go with it with five Gifted Northern Perspective memberships. Thank you very much Thank for you. that. Very, very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. Barrett now. Uh, yeah, Mr. Barrett, because uh, that concluded our first round, so we are on five-minute rounds. Mr. Barrett, go ahead, please. Do you own shares in SNC-Lavalin? I don't own shares in anything. Have you ever owned shares in SNC-Lavalin? I've never shown on shares in anything. I was covered by conflict of interest rules. As someone who specializes in governance, what do you think about cabinet confidence being used to hide wrongdoing and shield members of the executive from effective investigation by police? If that was the case, then that's not a very good idea, not a good thing. So we've had the RCMP before uh, parliamentary committees tell us that they have not been able to productively pursue investigations because of um, the executive's refusal to waive cabinet confidence. So you would characterize that as, as what? You said not very good? Depends what the confidences in question were and what they would have led to. I think that we know that in these cases they would have led to charges being laid against Justin Trudeau, and and that's why um, that's why that's your, hypo that's your hypothesis. We don't know. I don't know what was redacted, what was withheld, and what was produced. Indeed, we don't know because the executive has used their power. The prime minister has used his power to shield himself from effective investigation by police. Um, it creates a real problem when we don't uh, know what we don't know. We don't know. Um, we don't have anyone who watches the watchers, including our, our federal police. And, and on that, in a previous response, um, you said that when politicians start meddling in the justice system, it's not full democracy, it's authoritarianism. But that's what we saw with SNC-Lavalin. Isn't that right? Okay. Take that file out. You need it right now. <laughs> okay. Everyone take your glasses off because... Okay, all right. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, Canadian Jersey with a $10 super chat RCMP SNC investigation uh, where it's good to be lucky and lucky to be good, right? There you go. And we have uh, Robert McFallon with a $5 super chat. I used to respect Green. He is utter Marxist garbage. Yep. Uh, he is intelligent, but the problem is he's supporting the wrong, wrong ideology. Or he's supporting an ideology, let me just say that. Angela Cordorso with a $5 Super Chat. Fox, will you remind us about all the things you told us to remember? Because I don't remember. Um, In terms of this? I don't know. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> my memory's just just as good as everyone else's, I oh, think. Angela Cordoso, $2 Super Chat. Oops, I meant Cypher. <laughs> there you go. Um, Thank goodness. The, what I uh, told you like two minutes ago. So when he said an authoritarian government, sorry, a, a government interfering with the prosecutorial or law enforcement uh, responsibilities is an authoritarian government. And that's what uh, Barrett is just reminding him of. And for the record, I have removed my glasses so I can't read the chat right now. But so let's, Barrett let's saying, so what, <laughs> Barrett says, what would you call SNC Lavalin? That's the question. Well, where was the interference with the justice system? Well, uh, sir, welcome back from uh, 2019. Uh, I know that you had a front row seat at the time. Um, we had the prime minister who was found. Let me rewind that because you need it. As someone who specializes in governance, what do you think about cabinet confidence being used to hide wrongdoing and shield members of the executive from effective investigation by police? If that was the case, then that's not a very good idea. It's not a good thing. So we've had the RCMP before uh, parliamentary committees tell us that they have not been able to productively pursue investigations because of um, the executive's refusal to waive cabinet confidence. So you would characterize that as as what? You said not very good? Depends what the confidences in question were and what they would have led to. 
I, I think that we know that in these cases they would have led to charges being laid against Justin Trudeau, and and that's why um, that's why that's your hypo that's your hypothesis. We don't know. I don't know what was redacted, what was withheld, and what was produced. Indeed, we don't know because the executive has used their power. The prime minister has used his power to shield himself from effective investigation by police. Um, it creates a real problem when we don't uh, know what we don't know. We don't know. Um, we don't have anyone who watches the watchers, including our, our federal police. And, and on that, in a previous response, um, you said that when politicians start meddling in the justice system, it's not full democracy, it's authoritarianism. But that's what we saw with SNC-Lavalin. Isn't that right? Well, where was the interference with the justice system? Well, uh, sir, welcome back from uh, 2019. Uh, I know that you mm -hmm. had a front row seat at the time. Um, we had the prime minister who was found to have used his influence to pressure the attorney general. That's a finding of an independent officer of parliament. That's, that's not uh, my opinion. We, we know this to be a fact, and we know that you, sir, uh, on uh, doing the prime minister's bidding, doing Justin Trudeau's bidding um, in an extended phone call, put tremendous pressure on then Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould to do exactly what the Prime Minister wanted, and that was to give a deferred prosecution agreement or for the uninitiated, uh, effectively a get-out-of-jail uh, free card for um, a liberal, friendly firm, friends of the Prime Minister. And that's pressure. And what happened when Ms. Wilson-Raybould didn't do what she was supposed to do uh, in the Prime Minister's estimation? She was kicked out of Cabinet. And when someone spoke up on, on her behalf, um, they were kicked out of cabinet in Dr. Philpot. And, and for their dissent, they were both ejected from caucus. So it seems like that's a pretty heavy, uh, heavy hammer the prime minister was able to carry. And what did he do? He put in a justice minister who would do what he wanted to have done, to do his bidding. That is, as you described it, authoritarian because that's exactly the kind of interference in the justice system that happens in, in tin pot dictatorships. So that's one narrative. Another narrative would be that the maximum pressure put on the Attorney General was to provide reasoning and rationale why she declined to use a tool, an entirely legal tool that was provided by Cabinet, the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, which was made available for, for certain cases Deferred prosecution agreements are not an illegal act. They are a legal tool. It's how we got the two Michaels back from China. Yeah, the, the, uh, no one has said that a, a, a DPA is illegal. What we're saying is that the prime minister um, inappropriate, inappropriately interfered in the administration of justice in this country. And, and someone who would be willing to do that can't be trusted yes. to, of course, yes. per, you know, uh, uh, protect themselves um, from prosecution by the RCMP um, for obstruction of justice using powers of the executive. Um, that's, that's blatant interference. Do you have any regrets about how Jody Wilson-Raybould was treated? Okay. <laughs> so that's all of that. So um, if you didn't know what the SNC-Lavalin uh, affair was about, now you have a pretty good synopsis of it. And this is the thing. Wernick's excuse, his justification is that, well, he wasn't asking her to do something illegal. He was asking her, you know, just to use a legal tool. But he shouldn't have asked her to do anything. And and I saw a comment about, you know, the, the prime minister is, is allowed to advocate. Sure is. This is not advocating. There, there was a prosecutorial investigation going on with regards to SNC-Lavalin. The Prime Minister had no place to even comment on this. His role is to step back and, and let justice play out. That's his role. So, like, this, this is pretty blatant. To everybody except apparently the RCMP, right? So, uh, oh, we have a Star Trek nerd, and well, well I'm equally as nerdy because I, I, that's the name of the episode. Uh, Daniel with a uh, 279 super chat Star Trek reference. Who watches the Watchers? Absolutely, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Great episode, by the way. 
Um, Jerry Savoy with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Sorry, missing NP supporter. Couple part this uh, committee. Need to check on uh, pump. Have two feet of water in my basement. Oh, that oh, sucks. No. Uh, the main reason not uh, the active in the chat. Don't please don't. Yeah, <laughs> don't apologize. Please. Go deal with your <laughs> your pump, Jerry. Don't worry about oh, us. No. Thank you so I, much. I hope it all works out for you. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope it's all right. Um, Kimberly M with a five dollar super chat. Have you seen Mr. Raybolt? And Pierre uh, Trudeau spar. He warns Trudeau about his daughter on YouTube. No, I don't think I've seen that. No, that's interesting. I think we're going to look that up later. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. We need to get Daryl Stinson in the house. Yes. But anyway. Not every issue of ethics or behavior um, rises to the level of a breach of criminal law. That is why Parliament created a conflict of interest and ethics commission. Regrets, sir. Do you have regrets about how Ms. Wilson-Raybould was treated? I have no regrets about anything that happened. We all made our best decisions at the time with the information we had, everybody involved in the affair. That's gross. Thank wow. you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, Ms. Damoff, for five minutes. Go ahead, please. You know, like Jody Wilson-Raybould or hate Jody Wilson-Raybould, this was a person in this government that had every automotive vehicle run over her in terms of Yeah, she wasn't just tossed under the bus. She was tossed under, like, the bus, the boat, the plane, the, the train. train. Yeah, all of it. Uh, and she was just basically excised out of the uh, 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 systematically of the cabinet um, it was it was frankly disgusting so like you know you don't you don't it doesn't even matter if, if she was a liberal or not um, she stood up to do the right thing and she was crucified for it uh, Glenn Stewart, a member for five months. I believe that the Conservatives are looking out for Canada and the citizens of Canada. I think so, too. Yeah, we believe so, too. Uh, Diane Sylvain with a $5 super chat. The Attorney General is not like another minister. <laughs> oh, come on! And uh, that reminds me, I, I, I owe a PR to somebody. W-T-F. All right, I think I'm up on my meme debt. Um, okay, let's continue. Thanks, Chair. Um, oh, Mr. Warnick. Let's not continue with you. I'm not going to listen to you whine. Demi, Monsieur Villemur, deux minutes et demi. Two and a half minutes, Mr. Villemur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. this already go ahead mr warnick on a couple of occasions you mentioned that it's five years ago a long time um you, i think you'd stated that you're not a historian but you are a professor and you mm -hmm. are teaching governance what lessons do you teach your students about this whole affair i don't talk about this affair as a specific um you can read my book on governance <gasps> oh my <laughs> goodness uh, can you get any more arrogant and flippant than that? But also, like, this isn't a place to shill your book. Right? Not the venue, buddy. So, yeah. This is, he's talking to the NDP here. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, from where I sit, that sounds supremely arrogant when I'm asking you a question in this committee. <laughs> I'm not interested in buying your book, sir. I'm interested in you answering the question, what lessons were learned from, from this whole affair? And, and if, if your suggestion is that you don't delve into this conversation at all into your class, that's fine. But to continue to say like, check my CV, check my LinkedIn, read my book, buy my book, it's not landing the way you think it probably is. So I'll ask you again, what lessons learned do you have from this affair whether to students or to this committee for recommendations, because ultimately we have a responsibility to have some kind of report or recommendations coming back from this. And five years later, it's still a mess. It's still murky and it still undermines the, the, the people's faith in the, the democratic institution here. So, so there are. Okay. Good on Matthew Green for calling him out. Right. Good on, good on Matthew Green. In this specific scenario, good on Matthew Green. You know, 
Um, I wish he was like this all the time. But uh, it, it's it's great to see somebody just say, um, that's that's pretty darn arrogant. And you think you're... <laughs> yeah, you're not coming not across the way, the way you think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're actually looking like quite, quite a... Uh, quite something that's that's i'll put it that way parliament can change the laws so two specific recommendations one is that the law that was drafted and implemented by this parliament in 2018 about deferred prosecution agreements has some ambiguity in it in terms of the evaluation of economic interest which was the subject of one of the conversations so you should go in and reopen the law and take a look at the language on what can and cannot be used in considerations around a deferred prosecution agreement, because it will come up again sometime in the future. So there's a job that you only you parliamentarians can do. And if you're not happy with the rules about disclosure of cabinet confidences to uh, police forces or judges, change the law. Thank you. It, it really wasn't that hard. I appreciate that answer. That's all my questions. <laughs> And uh, kind of a, a slap to the face on the way out of that exchange. So, um, so there you go, folks. Uh, Wernick's response: huh, You don't like it? Go change the law. Don't come at me. Go change the law. What a guy, man. Something else. Yeah. Peter Witten with a five dollars super chat. Uh, Selena Caesar Chavans. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Uh, would be a great one, but maybe a little too crass. I don't know if anything's too crass for this guy. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, Trish Pro with a $2 super chat. Somebody obviously needs books brought. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jerry Savoy with a $2 super chat. Water in my basement is cleared. That guy. Excellent. That's good. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Cooper for five. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wernick, your telephone conversation with Jody Wilson-Raybould on December 19th, 2018 was made at the request of Justin Trudeau, correct? I'm sorry? I didn't hear that. Restate, restate the question. Your please. telephone conversation with Jody Wilson-Raybould on December 19th, 2018 was made at the request of Justin Trudeau, correct? Not specifically to call her, but um, my recollection of it is, and you can read me back my testimony, is that um, he wanted to find out what her rationale was for not pursuing a, 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 the, the DPA at the time. And so to, Justin Trudeau testified, but he did make that request. Ian, he has uh, testified to the ethics commissioner. And to put some context uh, with respect to that call, hours before you initiated that call, you had met with the prime minister his chief of staff, Katie Telford, and his then principal secretary, Gerald Butts, in which SNC-Lavalin and the issue of uh, deferred prosecution agreement came up. Yes, that was our last meeting before the Christmas holidays and a, and a two and a half week break Th before we thank all came back that, in January. Thank you for that, Mr. Wernick. I appreciate so your answer. So no, no, no. Barrick, I appreciate you answering the question. Answer? Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, oh, Mr. My. Cooper, uh, please, I see your point of order. I'm going to maybe solve what you're going to be asking. I, so. I would just ask that you give Mr. Wernick uh, an opportunity to answer the question, please, Mr. Cooper. Yeah, With it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just uh, thank you for that. Go ahead. So as I uh, said to the committee, the it, it was one of many issues that we discussed at a Christmas holiday wrap-up meeting. Okay. Thank you for that. And to put further context uh, with respect to that call, one day before that call, Jody Wilson-Rabel's chief of staff was summoned by Katie Telford and Gerald Butts and was told that by Butts and Telford that they didn't want to hear anything more about legalities. They wanted to get a deferred prosecution agreement done. So when the prime minister asked you to make this call, he was effectively giving Jody Wilson-Rabel her last chance to make the decision that he wanted before he fired her, wasn't he? I'm not aware of the conversation that uh, Ms. Telford and Mr. Butts had at the time. When I had my call, I wouldn't have been aware of that. And uh, this was before Mr. Bryson resigned from Cabinet and created the need for a Cabinet shuffle. 
Well, Mr. Wernick, that conversation uh, of Ms. Telford and Mr. Butts is now well documented, backed up by contemporaneous notes taken by Ms. Wilson Raybould's uh, chief of staff. So let's look at the facts. After months of pressure on the Attorney General, and the day following the meeting where the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff and Principal Secretary tell Ms. wilson Rabel's Chief of Staff, we don't care about legalities, just get it done, you give Ms. wilson Rabel to call at the request of the Prime Minister, wherein you state the Prime Minister is quite determined that he's going to find a way to get it done one way or another, that he is in a very firm mood about this, and you were worried about a collision occurring between him and her. So those are some very strong words, veiled threats. Why would you use those words if, in fact, it wasn't Jody wilson Rabel's last chance to make the decision that the Prime Minister wanted before he was going to fire her? Coroner M. Coop. You're hypothesizing an intention to fire her, which uh, I was certainly not aware of at the time. Well, you, you issued a number of threats after the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff had only a day prior and his principal secretary said, we're done with the legalities. And then guess what? Two and a half weeks later, after this phone call, following the Christmas break, she was fired as Attorney General. So taken together, I would submit there is no reasonable conclusion that can be drawn up or then that the Prime Minister fired Jody wilson Rabel when she wouldn't acquiesce to his demands to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Laughlin. And you know what that's called, Mr. Wernick? It's called obstruction of justice, isn't it? That's for the police to determine. Mr. Mr. Wernick, uh, you couldn't back up with any credibility uh, the issue of uh, SNC moving its headquarters. What about the jobs? What analysis had the government taken that at least 9,000 jobs were on the line? So I think that was all covered at the, at the Justice Committee and the production of documents for that. I don't have any of that material and, in front and, of me. And right the, now. the answer that you gave to Ms. May when she posed that question to you is that no analysis had been done. Hmm. There had been statements by the company and market disclosures, and there had been representations by the, compa uh, by the company, which are, which are on the record. This was a pressure campaign made by the Prime Minister, not in the public interest. It was clearly the Prime Minister acting in the interest of SNC-Lavalin, okay, and that's you. exactly what the Ethics Commissioner found. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Housefather for five. Go ahead. No, Mr. Housefather, not for five. So um, I don't. I think that's all pretty straightforward there. The, the line of questioning that uh, that Cooper was going at him on, and um, you saw, you saw how long it took Wernick to actually respond because he was, he was getting cornered, right? And you can see that he's a very effective witness at getting out of things, but he's he's being cornered, and it's very very difficult to get out. So you know. When all else fails, he he fails to, well, you know, that's that's your opinion, or that's a hypothesis, or, well, you know, that's up for the police to figure out. Nothing to do with me. Right? So, anyhow, let's get past Mr. Housefather. A, the committee order, Mr. Warner. And some issues on redaction and disclosure and withholding have gone to the federal court and even to the Supreme Court. Tension between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, and that would be a dispute yes. resolution at the judicial branch. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Housefather and Mr. Warnick. Mr. Brock for five. Thanks. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair, I'd like this time to move a motion that uh, pursuant to standing order 108 sub 1 sub A, the committee order Mr. Wernick and the Privy Council Office to produce all records of communications between Mr. Wernick and any board members, employees, or representatives of SNC-Lavalin, now Atkins Realis, between the period of November the 4th, 2015 to March 19, 2024, 
and that these communications be provided within 14 days of the adoption of this motion. And I hope that we have unanimous consent. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the questions for Mr. Wernick. Um, I had debated whether or not to, uh, to to show everybody the the motion. It goes on for about 40 minutes. <laughs> So it's obvious there is no unanimous consent for this. Um, so what essentially happens is that the Liberals have a big problem with this. Because what the motion is stating is that the Conservatives are asking for all documents that relate to any communication between Liberal cabinet members or the Privy Council office and SNC-Lavalin. And you can see why they're asking for this because Wernick is being quite the quite the guy and and not answering these questions so what ends up happening is that the liberals um the liberals are are kind of flailing against this a bit um and then all of a sudden you know mr Wernick says oh i have some documents Remember at the beginning of the live stream, he says, I have no documents. But all of a sudden, he has documents. All of a sudden, he has a bunch of documents. And he says, I'll, I, I want to help out the, the committee as much as possible. I'll send it to you. And it's everything that, uh, that, that you would have already gotten from the Privy Council. So don't worry about that. Believe me. So then the Liberals say, oh, well, why don't we just take what Mr. Wernick already has? You know, the guy that used to work for them. Why don't we just take what he already has and then we'll make a decision as to whether we need more documents. So the conservatives are like, what? Now, unfortunately, the block agrees with, um, with, with the liberals on that. So that actually passes. Um, and what ends up happening is the whole initially the the whole part of the motion about asking the privy council to provide documents that is gutted the conservatives then respond to that and say that this is absolutely crazy this is this is the liberal cover-up in action uh pam damoff has a a pam damoff moment where she's now you know complaining again that oh people are you know writing me emails and, and they're accusing me of clutching my pearls and and you know blah, blah, blah. and she's just it's infuriating you don't have to listen to it um and um but the conservatives continue on with their advocacy of, of the fact that like this is this is silly you have warnick saying that he didn't have any documents and so why are we waiting for documents from him oh now he all, all of a sudden has documents so then the NDP steps in and says, well, here's a suggestion. Why don't we amend the motion so that um, we're going to automatically ask for the Privy Council documents? Should at least one person in committee have an issue with that? Right? So if they're not happy with whatever mysterious documents Wernick provides, then we're automatically going to request that from, from Privy Council. The Liberals don't necessarily like that, but the Bloc says, yep, that sounds great. The NDP says, yep, that sounds great. And the Conservatives say, yep, that sounds great. So the Liberals see that they, the numbers are stacked against them, and they don't want to be on a recorded vote as railing against this because that that goes towards the whole cover-up thing, and they're going to lose anyway. So the um, the Liberals reluctantly end up agreeing. So the Conservative motion effectively passes um, so that they're going to get all of these documents anyway. So really good, um, really good co uh, collaboration between all of the opposition parties, Bloc, NDP, and the Conservatives, to move ahead on this um, and that's when committee ended so now there was some exchanges in there where uh, Chalal Chalal was trying to tell the chair what to do and Broussard uh, put him in his place and said you're not the chair of this committee so basically shut up um, but again it's 
there's a whole bunch of just back and forth and infuriating dialogue between the liberals and, and the conservatives as it relates to the motion. Um, but that's how this ended. So this is, again, another step in in getting more information and it's inch by inch by inch in pushing this forward um, but eventually they're going to get to the truth one way or the other they're going to get to the truth um so uh so that brings us to the uh to the end of committee so um uh fox what uh what'd you learn <laughs> um what did I learn? That um, apparently you can go into committee and hawk your merchandise or your book. <laughs> um, that pretty much don't piss off Michael Barrett, Michael Cooper, John Broussard, or Larry Brock. Though I think I knew that already. And uh, I think I learned that uh, Pam Damoff sees negative emails and comments as some form of abuse. Um, I think Pam's real name. I think Pam is probably her middle name. Her first name is probably Karen. Seriously. She has to be. Her real name has to be Karen Damoff. I mean, like, I'm not advocating for emailing the MPs or anyone for that matter abusive stuff and calling them names and telling them they suck and stuff like that. But as a public figure, you have to expect some level of that sort of thing and you you need to grow a tough skin and you need to grow up very quickly yeah it's um it comes with the territory especially in the age of social media if you can't take that type of scrutiny don't be an mp well and if if you fully believed in what you're doing then you would have i don't want to say no problem with it but almost no problem with it i mean we used to have people and we get it every now and then but we used to have people especially at the beginning coming to us and being like oh those those puppets are stupid you know why don't you show your faces you guys cowards etc etc and because we believed in the words we were saying we didn't think that the puppets mattered right so it didn't really bother us and evidently fifty-seven thousand other canadians don't believe that the puppets mattered either so but my point being that if you know what you're doing is good then you have no problem with people saying stuff yeah now um it depends on what the stuff is right if you're if they're advocating violence if they're you know going after their family and, and stuff like that yeah that stuff's not cool that's not cool if they're telling them you're doing a terrible job if you know they're kind of making fun of them but not in a uh like a a, a violent way or anything like that it, unfortunately that's fair game that's ter that's what the territory like threats yeah. are not okay ever Thre yeah threats but, are not okay but um, if somebody tells you that you're doing a bad job or you know you you screwed over canadians or something like this um unfortunately that's that's comes with the territory because there's certain ideologies that they get their way by threatening you know people institutions organizations whatever it is and you you can't you can't win against those types of ideologies by playing ball on the same level. You need to play, you know, a couple levels higher. So, um, anyhow. Um, but if you believed in the policies that you're, you're making, that you're participating in, then you wouldn't have an issue with it. Like, it, it would just be kind of like collateral damage. You wouldn't care. Yep. So... SNC Lavalin is the skeleton that won't stay in the closet of Justin Trudeau, and more and more uh, evidence seems to be slowly dripping out and dripping out. And uh, as Larry Brock has said before, he is a dog on a bone when it comes to justice. Um, he really is. I think we kind of <laughs> saw that in him today. Like he does not mess around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. I'm so excited to show you guys this interview. Um, it might take us a little while to edit. As we said, this was our first time using a double camera setup. So um, I think Cypher's got his work cut out for him. Um, but... Do you want to put up a quick poll just to see if everyone wants to do it as a premiere or just a, uh, a regular episode drop, just to see okay. what people say? Let us find Because um, it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, we're happy to do what people uh, like. Um, so people seem to like the uh, the premiere uh, format last time since we all got to watch it together. But uh, we won't be offended either way if the majority of people uh, vote to just drop it as a regular episode. That's totally fine with us, but we're just wanting to see what everybody thinks. So uh, stand by for that poll. And as Fox is doing that... Uh, okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I worded that nicely. 
There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Sarah Allen, uh, member uh, member comment for two months, almost three hours late. Uh, super excited to catch the replay. Love you both. Thanks so much for what you do. Thank you very oh, much, thank Sarah. thank you, Sarah. And Diane Sylvain with a $10 super chat. Thank you for tonight. I uh, forgot to say that in a courtroom. The tone of voice used by Wernick will also reveal a lot on that video. Uh, I am sure of that. I believe this will get to court. I, I think so. I think at one point it will uh it will definitely get to court so so i see a question in the chat um kind of like what is a premiere so when we premiere a video it's kind of like a live stream in that um you have the video on on the left side of the screen and then on the right there's a live chat but Cypher and I won't be on the mics. Um, we just let the video play and then... We get to actually interact in the chat. Yeah, we, we type in the chat. So um, that's what a premiere is. And then afterwards, it just turns into a regular video. And I think you can like reread the, the live chat after it's done. Um, but it's just a, it's just kind of like a, a different way that YouTube lets you, um, lets you do videos. Yeah, it's a way for... for um creators to interact with their audience as, as they drop a video right so um that way you know if there's any specific questions that you have we're actually paying In more attention chat. to the chat yeah. than than the actual video and you know we can interact with everybody so um so uh you know that's where it comes up to so we're up uh and and, and it doesn't matter actually if uh um if, if you don't want a uh, if you don't want to participate in the chat because you know then you just watch it as a regular video so uh, so there's actually no downside to it, but um, anyhow, let's uh, get to the last uh, last few super chats. Uh, Full Wookie with a five dollars super chat. If the libs want to get into a rugby match, they're going to get trashed. We'll get there one yard at a time if we have to. The libs are running out of gas. I completely agree with that, uh, Full Wookie. Like, there's just the, the the conservatives are hitting them from all sides and now now they have the premiers hitting uh, hitting at them as well so it's the hits aren't just coming from inside the federal government they're coming from outside the federal government from the provincial governments from liberal liberal provincial governments as well so they are literally getting hit from all sides from and, doug ford who may as well be a liberal well and <laughs> and mr fury uh out, out in newfoundland right he's, he's also a liberal and premier manitoba like they're all coming after them and that completely delegitimizes the whole aspect around the carbon tax and everything else when it comes to affordability so yeah i think i think they're this is just a slow decline until the end and you're right inch by inch they're gonna get there it's gonna be a slog but they're gonna get it over that uh that line and into the end zone jarsha with a five dollar super chat thank you very much did anyone see that the conservatives are getting pretty competitive in mount royal house father and uh and trudeau senior riding 31 percent to 41 46 percent oh they're climbing awesome they're climbing so um, and we also saw something on X. We need to validate it because uh, we were too busy doing the stream that allegedly another poll came out that has the Liberals in third place. After the block in terms of number of seats. So, so I mean, we could have a block opposition. It's happened before. It has. It could happen again. We just need to um, take a look at that data a little closer because we kind of saw it while we were sitting here doing the stream. So if but that is true... This, this basically validates what we've been saying would probably happen the longer they wait after this failed pharmacare, pharmacare fake pharmacare deal and the non-confidence vote is that support is just going to continue siphoning away from the Liberals and the NDP and they just got to make a decision. Do you want to go when the boat's above water or do you want to go when you're <laughs> when the boat is, is submerged and you have nothing else to, to keep yourself afloat? So... There we go. That's uh, that's where we're gonna leave you. Uh, we have nothing else planned other than uh, regular Saturday's video live stream. Yep. yep. Saturday's the live stream instead of Sunday this week because Sunday's Easter. We know everybody wants to spend time with their families, um, so we'll be doing the live stream on Saturday instead. So uh, until then, have uh, have a great rest of the week. Um, look for our video on the uh, premiers uh, testifying at Ogo. Uh, committee today that'll be dropped tomorrow at some point and uh, uh, keep your stick on the ice as, uh, as Red Green says and we'll see you in the comments and have a good night everybody thanks for joining us thank you everyone have a great night